All right. Yeah, we're right. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have literally, like my brother from another mother, I have Matthew Mornian. He's like, you know, like him and his wife have been so great to me as friends, like, and he's just an amazing person. He has amazing knowledge. Like, he knows a lot about the physiology of the body, and he's very spiritually advanced, too. Let me just read his bio. So his bio says, my name is Matthew Arian Mornian. I'm a multidimensional energy healer and intuitive reader, specializing in clearing, balancing, and removal of neg negative energetic manifestations from the body. His current mission is to assist the healing with the human body and our collective consciousness through activation of the expanding multidimensional intuit intuitive healing process that exists within each of us. His current practice follows a three-part protocol, which is tarot, spirit guide, consultation, elements of hypnotherapy, then direct transmission of multidimensional healing energy to release dead energy, blocked emotion, or host other physical, emotional, or energetic maladies of the body. And he also treats cases of implants, energy and parasitic attachment, negative energetic manifestation, and like extraterrestrial stuff, scalar toning. He does. Um, and he also had a pass as an addiction counselor. So he really knows how to, um, he, he does do therapy as well. And, and just for your, you, if you guys are new here, the theme of tonight, and it always is when I have Matt on is, um, it's multidimensional tarot. So, uh, if you want to, uh, get a reading, you can put your question in the chat. You can donate if you want, you're not in any obligation to donate, but, uh, for those of you that want to donate, it's better if you PayPal, but you can super chat too. both are help. They both help the channel a lot. So, um, you know, that's up to you guys. you I will get to your question faster if you super chat or PayPal because it, it's easier for me to see in the midst of all the chaos of the chat. So, but um, with all that said, uh, and Matt's website is www.rememberyourmission.com and you can find him on YouTube at Remember Your Mission. And uh, I'd like to give him a big warm welcome back to the show. Matt, thanks for coming back on, man. How are you? I'm really, really good. Like we were talking right as we came in here. Thank you for getting me out of the bubble of writing this crazy book that I've been obsessed with for, it's only been like a month and a half or two months, but it feels like it's been years. <laughs> it's like, it's been years. I'm trapped in this memory lane bubble and all this stuff. And so thank you for inviting me here. It's good to see everybody in the chat. Let me say this as we get started. If you're hanging out in the chat, share this video, share it somewhere. A lot of us that have been showing up in here lately are heavily shadow banned and I've heard even saying that word on YouTube now will contribute to it. So that'll be the only time I say it, but you can help us greatly by sharing this video and anywhere you can. And, but yeah, that said, thank you for inviting me, sir. It's very, very good to see you once again. Yeah. They're not sending out notifications. Maybe they're just tired of me. Cause I do so many live streams. They're like, we're not sharing all these, but like, <laughs> maybe, but they're, I don't know. They're just not shared that I never get a, I mean, cause I'm subscribed to my own channel. I would never, I, I never get a notification for my own videos or anything. So I don't know what's going on with that. You know, it's, it's weird. Sure, like, yeah. You know, Brilliant. but, um, so you're going to be at the full disclosure now conference. Like that's amazing. I'm going to be there too. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Hell yeah. That, that is shaping up to be a very unique and I think powerful showing of a number of people from all across, you know, the board, many different, uh, types of, you know, experiencers, secret space program people. And then there's, you know, like the weirdos like me that don't really fit in any of those categories, but have a very strange and specialized thing. And um, honestly, it, I feel really, really good about it. I'm honored to be a part of it. And I look forward to seeing if maybe a few people that are in the chat will be there as well. But honestly, it's really good to hear you're going to be there. I was genuinely, genuinely hoping that you would be able to make it there. And so um yeah that's a very, very I, was, good I was lucky like i, I had a, a really nice fan he stepped up and he paid for my room and then Hell brian yeah. said he wanted me there so he would comp my tickets so like i just gotta pay for my dinners and then i gotta get down there so i gotta um you know i gotta get some money for like to give I, i'm gonna ride down with maya you know mm -hmm. maya who does sos qht mm -hmm. she lives up in boston i'm in pittsburgh hey. so we're gonna ride down together and then, um, you know, so I'll have to give her gas money. And then I just want to have money. I don't want to be like totally broke down there. You know what I, I mean? Feel so you, man. I, so like, I, 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 I want to get some money together. And so guys, like if you can, if you want to support the podcast, now would be the best time. Uh, like, you know, I'm going to use it for good reasons. It's going to be going to go in this conference. Let me just tell you guys, when I go to this conference, depending on what Brian permits me to share, I'm going to share a lot with you guys. Like I'm going to be doing 
off to the side interviews, like, like say like Matt is we're in between speakers and I can grab Matt and we can do a five minute interview about how the conference is going. You're going to get that. If you know anything I can, I'm allowed to share or what Brian allows me to do, I'm going to do, but I don't want to overstep my boundaries. Like I'll just, I'm basically just going to do what Brian lets me do, but I'll try to give you guys the most coverage. Plus I'll live stream on the way down there and I'll show you my hotel room and everything. Like you'll get the whole conference treatment for me is depending on again, what Brian lets me share. But so I plan on doing that, you know, so it's, it's going to be awesome, man. I'm, nice. I'm looking forward to it. Be, you know? It's going to be an epic uh, gathering. Are you going to be at the day of being as well? I know they're doing that event just prior to it. I don't think I'm going to be at that. I, you know, I, I, I don't, I didn't, I didn't plan that out, but I, you know, I, you know, I figured the conference is probably enough for me, you know? Um, so I, I bet it sounds fun. The day of being sounds awesome too. You know, I have it's a like feeling a you'll, you'll probably show up a day ahead. Most of us do. We show up a day ahead and just, 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 just in case you do, I think a lot of us will be down there at the day of being, which I guess is coincidentally very, very close. To where we're having this conference they're all kind of in the same vicinity but who knows either way it's it will it will be awesome and so yeah i'm glad to hear you're going yeah yeah and uh well the, the last thing i wanted to talk about before we get into the readings and we're going to be doing the readings guys so yeah i see you guys are putting in your questions put in your questions donate definitely for sure thank you andromedan and whoever else donated hey. but um <laughs> i wanted to talk about the liver flush because i did it i i yeah. it was it was it was insane like i saw what i saw come out. i swear i saw a bug come out man yeah. like i i, I it, that's what it looked like to me it looked like a bug i was like how did a bug get inside me i was like what you know, but no There's stones though this time. In there, man. There's some really, really crazy stuff in there. For those of you guys that are wondering what it is we're talking about, we're talking about a very particular type of liver flush. It's been kind of championed by a number of well-known kind of healers and kind of, you know, medical people over the years. One version of it was created by a guy named Andreas Moritz. Another was created by a lady named Dr. Holda Clark. I think both of them are heavily kind of suppressed throughout, you know, a number of outlets so we won't we won't mention their names too much but what it what it essentially involves is kind of a week long period of generating bile within the liver and the gallbladder and the digestive tract for the very specific purpose of pushing out stones that have formed within the physical body over the course of our life cycle and Honestly, if you're in the age group and, you know, I know some of you guys are beyond that. Some of you guys are, you know, behind that. But I've noticed and what I was told is that when we get into our 40s and our 50s as humans in this life, nearly all of us have gathered a number of stones within the gallbladder, within the liver. And what I've discovered, especially for myself, is that uh, they are one of the hidden causes of a number of diseases, inflammation in the body mood swings we could even go back to you know we could even go into the multi-dimensional realm and talk about liver implantation and the manner through which we hold negative thought forms in the body and a lot of those kind of revolve around stones that grow in uh, the liver over time and so it's it's been kind of a devotion of mine over the past couple months and it was it was actually given to me by uh one of the clients that i work with a really cool lady um, I don't know if she wants me to say her name, so we'll kind of. <laughs> she knows she knows who she is, but um, she kind of reached out and was like, "Hey, I've been doing this cleanse, and for some reason, when I saw it, I was like, oh, I just knew that I had to do it." And so I've been kind of telling everybody, but um, it will change so much in your life. And I'll, I'll just kind of, you know, before I go on too long, it's important to remember that as we go through the journey of psychic or multi-dimensional activation, that your liver rules the eyes it's stated in chinese medicine and it's been my direct experience now i don't necessarily mean the eyesight although that has a big effect what i mean is the ways in which we perceive energy in our mortal realm through the lenses of the eyes whether that be the internal eye the third eye or the physical eyes is in large part regulated by the condition of, uh, of the liver so the more we treat the liver the more we learn to look at the energy and the truth and the goings on in our world much much differently and so Anyway, I'm really glad that you did it. <laughs> it wait, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of people asking how they can do it. I just want to tell you guys, Matt was nice enough. He got me the book. That's how great of a friend Matt is. Like, 
you know, like it, it and and maybe I shouldn't have shared that, but I mean, it was really okay. nice of him because well, he saw a sickness in me. Like I've been really sick, guys. Like I've had like really bad liver pro. I mean, like I don't know what it, it is, is, you know. Um, it, but yeah. uh, the the book is by Andreas Moritz. It's called um the 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 ultimate liver gall the, the the amazing liver gallbladder flush, and um you I think I, from what I heard from Eric Dadmer, you want to get the 2012 edition, which is what I have. Oh right, is that yeah. correct, Matt? Um, I have I have heard that, but I only know the one <laughs> I only know the one I got on Amazon. I don't know what edition it is, but um, honestly, it's it's a it's a good move for anybody. Like if you've been noticing that you have in inflammation in your body that won't leave, if you've noticed how your energy levels have been waning as you get older, if you've noticed how your moods are harder to regulate, if you notice how you're picking up strange illnesses and just difficulties that persist in the body and you're having a hard time just getting over things in general. Or let's say if you've ever had an addiction cycle in this life, which was the one of the biggest stages, you know, for me, um, that is nearly a guarantee that you've got liver stones and not that it's always about, you know, stones or the liver. We got a whole bunch of other systems in the body, but I've just noticed that based upon what it is we're all consuming in this world, um, it's, it's just one of the biggest, it's just one of the biggest things that we have to deal with. And so anyway, watch out. Cause I'll, I will talk on this forever, but well, I, just I, real quick, I want to say for people that want to know, like you can, you can get some of the stuff at the grocery store, but I ordered a kit off of Amazon where they send you vitamin C, they send you Epsom salts and they send you L or Intheon, which is a liver detox mm -hmm. chemical or not. It's like a, a amino acid. Um, and then you go to the store and get your own lemons and grapefruits and, um, I, whatever it was, but I'm going to do it again because I, I thought it was really powerful, you know? Um, so I have a feeling that uh, the next time I'm going to get a lot of stones out because maybe that was my body. Cause when I actually did the flush itself, I felt some weird thing going on in my stomach. It was like, it was healing me or something. Oh, it yeah. was, it, it was really interesting, you know? Yeah. It definitely is. Honestly, I'll, I'll just say this. I don't want to, you know, make this too big of a deal, but you actually look different since then. And for everybody that's watching, where will you notice liver build up on the face? You'll see it right here, right at the very top of your cheekbone. And then you'll notice lines that show up, especially the vertical lines that go right in between uh, your eyebrows. But you will you'll see people that have long term liver or even gallbladder dysfunction. And sometimes people will see it on me because I am also famous for having very in inflamed liver over the years. You'll notice how this part of the face will tend to puff out a little bit. And for a lot of us, it's a sign that we're we're literally holding fluid or inflammation in that part of the body. Now, for people that kind of are know a little bit more about, you know, where the organs show on your face, it's not just liver energy that shows here. I know I think kidneys also show around the bottoms of your eyes. So there's going to be some real knowledgeable people, knowledgeable people that are like, well, wait, it's more than that. Yes, it is. But one thing we notice is that this part of the face will start to puff out to illustrate the amount of fluid that we're holding there. And I have also noticed that with you as well, where it's like, as we treat that, it's like everything here kind of goes back down to normal. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a fascinating system, man. Crazy stuff. Yeah, it is. I'm going to, I would, I would recommend everybody do it. I mean, it was, it was really, I think, and I'm going to do it again. I mean, I, I tell you real quick, before we get into the readings, I'll just tell you, I had a, uh, uh, the girl I met from Pittsburgh. Um, she put me onto a healing group. Um, she's a friend of mine, Jill. I think she's in the chat and they yeah. told me I had an entity attachment. They, they scan that one of the, these healer guys, they, they thought I had some kind of any attachment cause I got attacked last night, man. Like, I, I don't know what it was. Like I was trying to stimulate an out of body experience and I've had some problems with something in my studio here for a while. Like, I don't know what it was, you know, I, it's, it's hard to say when you have something like you're being bothered by that it's supernatural. Cause you don't want people to think you're crazy, but let me just explain to you. Like it started with think something touching me and then it, it progressed. And like, then I started waking up with bruises. And then last night around three, I went to bed at like two in the morning and at three in the morning, I woke up, my whole body was vibrating. 
Now that could have been because I was trying to stimulate an out of body experience. I was listening to Hemi Sync by Neural Beats, but beyond that, what happened was it felt like there was something manipulating my organs. Like I could feel something like messing with my heart. I and it just did not feel good. Like I got a really scared feeling over me. So I didn't tell these people that today. I didn't tell them anything. And they just saw it right away. They're like, you have a, an entity there or something, you know? Uh -huh. So they think that the entity was, um, you know, sucking my life for it, like my liver force too. You know, but that that's not, I don't think that there, you know, I still think I have an issue with stones too. You know, it's yeah. it's a combination. It's well, like stones, kind of hand in hand. Something. you know, I don't know. What do you think from your experience? Well, actually, first off, I'll just ask you another question about that. Hopefully it's not too uh, personal. But when you woke up and you felt that feeling of the vibration or, or something that was kind of moving around in your body, do you remember it? Was there anything else that came with it? Was there any other senses? Was there any emotions? Was there any thought forms that came along with it that you can uh, recall? A lot of fear. A lot of fear. For yeah. I don't know why. Here's the thing. I got to be real. I, I I have had a nearly identical experience. When, honestly, the only time in my life that I ever experienced sleep paralysis was in the one and only time in which I watched an entity literally come over to the side of my bed and stick its hands inside my body. And literally, it was like it put its hand inside the right side of my body where my liver was, and it was like moving around trying to find something in there. And I knew at the time, based on what I was seeing and watching and what I was feeling, that this was definitely some form of an entity attack. And yet at the same time, what I have learned since then is that, and you know, I'm not I'm not gonna say, you know, that the people that told you this were either right or wrong. That's totally up to them and between you to decide. But what I have found since then is that when we start to move energy through certain organs where there's been a lot of buildup or a lot of thought forms or a lot of old emotions or a lot of toxins, that that will also give off what I call, for people that have been in our classes, I see a couple of them in the chat, what I call the bait signal. The bait signal is sort of an essence, or we could even call it like a scent, a multidimensional non-physical scent that is given off by the body when we're releasing toxicity. And that in and of itself can literally attract parasitic interaction. It can attract a host of, you know, what we might call lower density, you know, beings. But here's the thing that over the years I have come to believe is the number, maybe not the number one, but a very exceedingly common manifestation. And some people are not going to agree. Some people are going to be like, no, it was a reptilian. Um, what I have noticed <laughs> is that this disembodied humans, people that are have have died, they've passed on, and they're still existing in the lower astral realms. What I've noticed over the last few years, it's funny because I've been writing about this lately, is that that, in my opinion, is far more common than anything involving, you know, archons or you know reptilians or you know whatever you want to call it. That in many cases. Um, a, a fully formed human consciousness that has been trapped in the lower astral planes will learn how and also just default at a certain stage to take a number of forms. And what I've noticed is that a lot of people will confuse uh, an entity attachment for what is essentially, I know this is such a funny catch-all term, but it's essentially passed on dead humans or what some people call spirit activity. Now, I've kind of noticed that on some of your shows when you've talked to people that to me, it feels as though that's a factor for where you live in general, that it might not necessarily be, a, you know, necessarily attracted to you alone. But I think that because of the work that you've been doing on yourself, that in and of itself will just kind of attract stuff in there. And so anyway, that's a really long winded way of saying, I think that it's true. And yet at the same time, I'm one of those people that that does not, I, I, I really don't default into fear on those. I don't default into avoidance. I take it on a case-by-case -case basis. And um, it would also make sense that as you're experiencing that vibration, that is a really good example of when you're moving in and out of the body. You'll feel that crazy, crazy vibration. And sometimes you'll wake up in it. Sometimes you can induce it. Um, but anyway, I... I think it was something that really happened. How are you feeling now? Did you feel after effects? I feel after they did this healing, it, 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 I feel like my energy felt a lot lighter. I felt a lot like less pain. Like I still have the pain, but I noticed a lot of the, what I'm doing is I'm hunching over when I do podcasts. And then I, I, I noticed that I'm clinching a muscle inside there too, for whatever reason. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I've noticed those things. So I was thinking maybe it might have something to do with that. But because I've also, I got a treadmill recently and I've been working out hard every day. Like, so that's made me feel better too. You know what I mean? Like I've been, I've been doing like five miles a day, six miles a day, you know? Like, nice. um, Hell yeah. To me, that's that, that is a really, really good move. And regardless of what it was, one of the ways in which you're going to notice when you do have an entity attachment is it's lot, it's a lot less about, a singular occurrence, meaning something that will come to you, you know, just in the night. And what it'll usually do is influence your behaviors. It will influence your thought forms. It'll keep you stuck in addictions. It'll keep you stuck in negative emotions. And honestly, based on what you're saying, the way you're kind of describing what you're doing right now, to me, it doesn't sound like direct entity attachment. It sounds like you more or less had an attack an attack of sorts as you are moving in and out of the body. Because honestly, for most of the people that I've encountered that have had fully formed entity attachments, they're really not going to be able to fully engage in healing, you know, behaviors. They're not going to be working out. They're not going to be flushing their body. They're going to be kind of spinning in this weird bubble of dis dysfunction. And that's anyway. Yeah. Sorry to go on and on about it, but. So, uh, okay. Yeah, th- so thank you to everybody who's donated so far and we're going to start the readings, I guess now. And, uh, oh, yeah. and yeah, like I said, you can donate if you want. I, we got the PayPal donations. I, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll read those off here in a second. And, uh, this is a first timer. So this is from, uh, Jillian Canastrero. She's my friend from Pittsburgh. She says, thank you, Rob and Matt request multidimensional reading, please. Big booty blessings. <laughs> what's up okay yeah 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 for real let's we're gonna we're gonna jump directly into the world of multi-dimensional tarot since we haven't done this in a while i'm gonna ask everybody in the chat you guys are gonna hear this eight seconds after i say it so we're not gonna be lined up but i'd like everybody to take a deep breath in a big full breath hold it at the top and then whoosh, Press your breath all the way out of your body, like all the way down to the bottom, almost to the extent that it creates an urgency to breathe in. It's like you're going to fully breathe in and fully breathe out. And I think it's just very helpful when we're engaging in some form of an energetic operation to sort of prime the body, at least on a limited level. And so I'm going to take another deep breath in before we do her reading. Thank you. As we honor all those of you alongside Jillian in this human body, in this human world, let's see what's going on. We're going to keep it simple and see what uh, see what spirit has to say. Here we go. Ready, guys? We're going to see it uh, together. I don't. And for those of you guys that are new, I'm not one of those people. Like when we do these readings, I'm not sitting here with a bunch of cards on the table in the background, going, "Hmm, this means this." Like I have no pre or front loading whatsoever. We see it live in the moment. Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom. Okay. All right. All right. So number one, first up today for Jillian Canestrara. We got a wheel of fortune. Um, For those of you guys out there that are trying to learn tarot, for those of you guys that are opening up your multidimensional intuitive abilities, there's going to be times when certain cards show up. And when you see them from now on, especially those of you guys that are starting to read tarot, you're always going to know what this means especially for Jillian, your time is now. Your opportunity is now. When the wheel of fortune pops into your world, spirit's telling you to take a chance, to take a bet, to bet upon yourself, to jump at something. Usually you're going to notice if you're aware of what's going on in your world, Jillian, you will notice on some level the cycles that you have been through, meaning cycles of desire, cycles of relationship, cycles of purpose, sometimes cycles of employment, number of different cycles. The Wheel of Fortune is very heavily dependent on cycles. In fact, for those of you guys that can read symbolism, you can tell it's like this massive circle with a host of many different experiences or what we might call versions of you. So Jillian, when you have this in your life, your time is now to take a chance. Every now and then that could even mean play games of chance if you want to kind of extrapolate it into that area. What it really means is that you're in a very opportunistic cycle if you're willing to recognize the areas of your life that keep coming around. It's similar to what we would call the function of the aces in multidimensional tarot, which also talk about cycles and timeline shifts. But when the wheel of fortune comes in, 
Just know that time is of the essence. There's been a desire. There's an opportunity in your world, and you need to jump on it right away. Just know that even if you don't know what that is, sometimes it shows up in the days and weeks after you receive this card. Sometimes it's already passed you by. I got to be real because that's one of the problems with Wheel of Fortune. If we have an opportunity and don't act upon it, we can lose it. But I got to be real. It's not a permanent loss. As you know, or as you can imagine, the Wheel of Fortune just keeps going around and around and around. And so, yes, you will go through many experiences before that opportunity comes back in. But anyway, Jillian, before I go on and on, you need to take a chance on something and really, really go for it because spirit favors those who are willing to strike while the iron is hot. And Anyway, you got a wheel of fortune. Use it wisely. Boom. Wow. So it can be like you're, what you're saying is just to extrapolate. You, it can be many things, right? It could be whatever resonates with you, I guess, to take a chance on, whether it's fortune, relationships, employment, it Anything. could be multiple things all, all at the same time. I think that's one of the things that makes multidimensional tarot truly multidimensional in that it does not apply to any one singular aspect or singular process in your life. Now, surely a question may arise or might be posed about you know a specific thing that's happening in your world, but the nature of multidimensional tarot is meant to be one that involves a multitude of different timelines at the same time. So honestly, Jillian, it could be all of those things or it could be one of them. I would say the big takeaway from it is that your opportunity is here. It is now. And whatever that may be, even if it's multiple things, spirit's telling you straight up, take a chance, take a chance, do it, do it. And so whatever that is, wow. go for it. Yeah. We were talking about entities. Uh, now I'm going to get to the donations in a second, but I thought this was a really interesting. I was talking to this girl last night. This is the natural sentient. Um, she's from Czechoslovakia, but she's living in Turkey, but she feels like she had an entity attack last night. I was talking to her at like two in the yeah. morning, our time. She says, hi, Robin, Matt, last night I had a sleep paralysis induced by the presence of a dark male entity. I'd like to understand the deeper meaning of what's going on. Thanks a lot for a reading. Much love. Yeah, yeah. First off, I'll make a slightly unrelated uh, comment. I have a great affinity for Eastern European countries. I don't know why. You know, uh, that that like part of the world I've always found fascinating. No, I have never, ever been there, but I, I don't know. I'm always like, oh, Czechoslovakia. Oh, cool. You know, just that, that whole region seems like a very cool place. And so having said that, um, and natural sentient, I, I'm – Hopefully we have your approval, but I'm going to kind of peer into your energy field. Sometimes when we have an attack, we can experience a little bit of energetic inflammation. And I think when we come into public settings like this, it's not always as easy to kind of zoom in on someone. But I'm going to real quickly kind of zoom in on your energy. And so just like we did with Jillian, I'm going to take a slow breath in. I'm going to look at your thumbnail as well, breathing in. feels like I'm just going to go with the immediate empathic response. It feels like you've met this energy before, that it has been at least on some level watching or aware of your energy. It feels as though you may be in a state or a stage of natural, intuitive, or multidimensional activation, meaning a number of systems, we could say lights, we could say abilities, are kind of turning on within the body. And kind of like we were saying for Rob, when there's a movement, there's an improvement, there's an action that's occurring in the physical or non-physical self, it gives off a vibration or maybe a scent, or, or maybe you're just incredibly open to spiritual energies as it is already. Um, if we wanted to put a label on it, which doesn't always apply, but we could call it an incubus type of energy, um, I would say one of the things you could do to help lessen the effects or to help or to change the, you know, the likelihood that it will return would be to work heavily with your sacral chakra, work with the pericardium meridian, which are two of the primary fire centers in the body. Because most of the time when we attract stuff like that, it's kind of responding to an excess or sometimes, you know, less of a certain type of energy. But in my opinion, I think the, these these are entities or sometimes, like I was saying earlier, you know, beings on the lower astral plane, sometimes human energies that will use you as a feeding source. And it feels like I say this, you know, lovingly, but also humorously. It feels like you're a very activated feeding source for some of these beings. So maybe the key right now or 
you know, one of the keys for you would be to generate strength within the body, which would be the physical body. If you're wondering where you would start turning to, to generate solidity within your energy field, I would work on the hips. I would work on the thighs, the legs. I would start, you know, you could even start running. Some people would be like, well, what's that going to do with, you know, stopping spiritual attacks? I'll tell you, it has to do with strengthening the root chakra and your earth star chakra, which is down at the bottoms of your feet. And when we're holding excess energy that's attracting negative entities, in a lot of cases, it's because something will need to pass through us. And so I would say strengthen those, strengthen your fire centers, um, and also create, you know, any form or use any forms of mantras, proc, proc proclamations, whatever you need to do to claim sovereignty over your space. Um, Cause I believe, you know, if they can feel us, if they can affect us, we can affect them. And I'm not saying go into war with anything. I'm just saying, understand that you have an ability to deflect these energies that oftentimes are way stronger than we are led to uh, believe. And so I might just be ranting at you, natural sentient, but it feels like it's part of your psychic activation journey. And so, wow. So it's there. nothing to fear then for her. Maybe. Like it's something maybe, you know, maybe would, misunderstood. Well, I mean, honestly, it feels like a direct attack. I'm going to be real, especially if you are having sleep uh, paralysis that, yeah. while is, is not always an attack scenario, sometimes we're dislodged from the energy body. But what does happen when we're in that state is we're wide open. You're wide open. And it's kind of like having all the doors and windows in your house open for a short period of time. There might be many days in which you'll have all your doors and windows open and nobody comes by, right? It's just like, you know, no one comes in. And then every once in a while, you'll be in that state half in, half out of the body or, you know, going through some sort of a process in your dream world. And, you know, one day someone will come by. And they will be like, whoa, what the, what the hell is this? You know, and then they'll end up coming in there and siphoning energy out of you. And anyway, I'm not trying to go on and on about it, but I believe you are strong enough to successfully deflect and to strengthen your energy body so that if and when it does come back, you're going to be able to rid your space of it. And anyway, I feel like I'm kind of looping on that. I hope it makes sense. Yeah, that does. That, that's just amazing. The next one I'll get to, this is a PayPal donation from Selena Ingalls. She yeah. PayPal me earlier. Thank you, Selena. She says, uh, reading, I just put her name up there so you could tap into her. She, you know, Selena though. Um, totally. She says, reading with Matthew, I would like a relationship reading or messages I need to hear. Thank you. Totally. What's up, Selena? It's good to see you out there. Oh, for those of you guys in Selena in this human journey, we're just looking for anything that needs to be made known or seen or acknowledged in her current world. And here we go, Selena. Three, two, one. Boom. All right. What? Okay. You got a queen of wands, Selena. Uh, this is the queen of fire. This is the queen of determination. This is the queen of desire. This is a truly shameless being. If you're wondering, okay, cool. Those are all great. What do I do with it? Some of you guys have heard me say this before, <laughs> so you're going to be like, yeah, we know. Uh, the duty of the Queen of Wands is to do whatever the hell she wants to do. I'm serious. She's the Queen of Desire, the Queen of Fire, and she's what we, what we call feminized fire. And for those of you guys that are familiar with that term, what feminized fire means is that it is fire that must create. As it burns, it creates something. So questions you can ask yourself, Selena, what am I creating right now with the essence of fire and the desire and the passion within me? You can also ask yourself, what am I passionate about right now? Where do my passions lay? What am I passionately seeking? What am I burning for in this life? Because I got to be real, when you have like one of the major players in the realm of wands, and I realize this is just a one card reading, so it could be a big deal or it could be like a little deal. But, you know, when you have one of the, you know, literally the queen of fire, if you don't have something you're burning for or desiring or trying to manifest or like we could even say lusting after if you want to go down that road. If you don't have something like that in your world, queen of wands is one that will be given anger instead. She could be given frustration instead. And also at the same time, she can have one of those experiences where everything in her just withers. It's almost like a fire that's slowly going out. You just see the flames dying. And so the key for Queen of Wands is to embrace her desires. And then also along with that, 
she has to be willing. And this, for some people, it's like, what? But she must be willing to do whatever she does behind closed doors. She does it out in public. She does it in the front yard. She does it on YouTube. She takes the things that she's shameful about and worried about and guilty over, and she broadcasts them out to the world. Is like, hey, guys, here's me. Look at all this embarrassing shit I've been through. Queen of Wands, her, her, her fatal emotion is shame and guilt. So when you're embracing a Queen of Wands in your life, you must completely rid yourself of shame and guilt. And when you do it right, when you when you rid yourself of shame and guilt, when you rid yourself of avoidance, when you embrace your passions and the fire within you, this is a trait for both King and Queen of Wands. When you embrace those things, you become the type of being that knows how to fulfill their desires, that knows how to be willful, which is a weird term for some people. And they will do it in such a way that it recruits other people along with them. People look at a queen of wands and they're like, whoa, yeah, I'm going to do it just like her. I'm going to do it the way she does it. That's badass. And so I would say em embody that version of yourself. You, you so, know, it's interesting, Matt. Uh, so I don't want to tell man. Selena's business, but she met someone recently. It's someone that is in my chat as well. They met from what oh, I yeah. guess watching my show and it's a good friend of mine as well. And they have a really good chance for a really good relationship. I think that's why she, so it's weird that she got the queen of wands. You know what I mean? It's like, that's yeah. really interesting. You know, that's, that's really cool. That's a I beautiful thing. I mean that very, very sincerely, especially the fact that some people would meet or like have a, uh, connection through your show it's kind of showing how 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 much of an effect that you're having on the world and yet at the same time i think it's a cool sign that people have done a lot of self-work because for a lot of us we will go around this you know soul group wondering you know who who and when will i meet someone how will i create a deeper level of connection in uh, my life and a lot of people seek it, but it tends to only come when we've done really sincere work on ourselves. And so to me, it's it's a really strong testament to the fact that you've been healing something within yourself because usually that's when the other people start, you know, to show up. And so anyway, good job. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, this next one is a PayPal donation from uh, Mary. Let me see what uh, her name is. I'll, I'll look on PayPal. Mary Heistead, H-I-E-S-T-A-N-D. Hey, How are you feeling? What's up? Yeah, she says, uh, question for Matthew, working with a new person in my practice that I believe is a reptilian, have seen them shapeshift. Info around this would appreciate, she says. Yeah. And thank you, Mary. What's up, Mary? It's very, very good to see you. I know Mary. Mary is a, a v extremely talented energy worker and professional psychic in her own right. I mean that sincerely. She knows it as well. And so what's up? <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, I guess I'll start with an kind of an opinion. And for those of you guys that know me, I choose to differentiate when I'm giving an opinion versus like a reading or something that I might perceive as coming from spirit. So this is a this is an opinion. Um, I would say if you're viewing that reptilian energy within someone that you're working with, it's usually because if there is a reptilian energy working with them, sometimes attached to them, or if they themselves are holding, you know, a reptilian imprint from a previous life or an alternate self, if you're able to perceive it, I think it's usually because that being or that energy has been is given consent for you to perceive it. For those of us that have encountered a true reptilian energy in this life, and that's a lot of us, myself included, but for those that have, it's inevitable that when we do encounter that energy, you realize that they don't show themselves unless they're damn well willing to do so. They don't let you know they're there unless they're like, yeah, I'm going to show myself because we are talking about a force of consciousness that is it just genetically, inherently, naturally so much more powerful than human consciousness that I think a lot of us, myself included, cannot even accurately understand the level to which they are so much different in how they operate on the multidimensional planes. And so if they're showing themselves to you, it's for a reason. And then the other thing I would say is is look at look at the quality or the issues, or rather the quality of that person's life, and look at the issues that they're having, because um, I think that's also going to show you if this is a negative reptilian attachment, which. 
you know, I'll be real. I, I, I d don't really encounter that many of them. I know everyone out there likes to use them as the number one villain in the multidimensional realm. And some people hate me for saying this, but I don't believe that for a second. I think that a lot of these consciousnesses are quite negative, but there's also a very, very large amount of good ones. And so I would say, look at the quality of what's going on in their life. Look at the issue that they came to you with. Uh, you know, maybe they have a reptilian guide or maybe that person themselves is a reptilian. And I don't know, maybe I'm going into a different area with it, Mary. But when I've encountered stuff like that, as crazy as it is, I tend to feel honored that that being has been willing to show itself to us. Because most of the time when they don't want you, they're just going to cause chaos and drama, pain and dis connection in our world and there's been a number of sessions that i've done over the years where i have i have been made aware of a reptilian presence and in the process of being made aware of that reptilian presence in that session they have even told me like straight up i'm allowing you to be here this person is mine there's nothing you can do about it it's like they're allowing themselves to interact with you and so anyway i'm kind of going on and on about it but that's I have a feeling maybe I've they're trying to that. help anyway go ahead sorry I was going to say I never heard the reptilian consciousness described that as that um, it's in, it's fascinating to me. That's fascinating. So there are the a whole other level basically than us. They're like absolutely one hundred percent. And some people aren't going to agree. I, I've seen a lot of good people in our soul group go, "Oh, you know these reptilians. All you got to do is blast them with light. All you got to do is send them love. All you got to do is invoke the name of Jesus or something." And I'll be real, invoking the name of Jesus is actually very helpful. It can work in a number of situations. But what you're going to find, and you know, once again, this is just my experience. This is what I've learned. This is what I've seen. When you come in contact with a real reptilian consciousness, like a true one, there's not jack shit that you can do about it. Really, truly, the real version of them are so far beyond this. And yet, at the same time, I think a lot of us, you know, within our soul group right now, are coming to a stage in which we're beginning to understand that aspect of self. So some of you guys are going to even be doing your own meditation processes or randomly looking in the mirror one day, and you're going to see this reptilian kind of image in your own body. And I think that's a natural part of the evolution of what that energy brings into our mortal sphere. And in my opinion and experience, a lot of reptilian guides and kind of versions of ourself and other beings are, are letting themselves be seen right now because, and I know this is a kind of a cringe term for some people, but they are ascending alongside us. They're also going through an evolutionary change. And so anyway, sorry to go on and on, Mary, but I would just ig examine it, you know, ask it some questions. And I got to be real. It feels doesn't feel like a negative thing, but maybe I'm totally wrong. I might be wrong. Take it all with a grain of salt. <laughs> But anyway, that, 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 that was fun. fascinating. That was fascinating. And and uh, this next one is from Don Rogers. Okay. Don, good to see you. And then I'll get to the super chats next, guys. And uh, uh, Don, this was a PayPal. Don says a reading for Kyla, please. And thank you, Don. Totally. Kyla's okay. his girlfriend. Cool. So it's a reading for. Oh, I'm sorry. The name was Kyla. You said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, Don? Good to see you. Let me just shuffle these cards here for a moment. For those of you guys that know me, you will know I am an advocate of heavy and repeated shuffling when it comes to pulling tarot. I, I talk about this in our tarot class a lot, but it's like you're going to see a lot of people doing readings, you guys. I always choose to mention this over the years, and you'll just see them like restacking the cards. They don't actually randomize anything. They're just like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to rearrange everything. And what I've noticed is that that leads to a lot of, you know, just diluted energy. And anyway, it's not to say that the same cards don't come back because sometimes they definitely do. But anyway, this is for Kyla. Here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. Well, 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 Kyla, you got a three of pentacles, which... I don't think anybody on earth can ever receive a, a, a three of pentacles and be bummed about it because when it shows up in your life, and let's be real, you guys, this is the Robin Wood tarot deck I'm using and the three of pentacles in Robin Wood can sometimes be kind of confusing when you look at it. Look, it's this, it's this old guy and he's like working on something. He's chipping away at something. And what it means is when this energy comes into your life, you're receiving an upgrade an upgrade due to good work that you've done due to a natural progression in moving from one step 
to the next step. And it's kind of illustrated, you know, within the symbolism when we see it, a process of ascension, a rising action, work that one is doing. And so I think if I was you, Kyle, I would ask yourself, what is it that I've been hammering away at in my life right now? What have I been chipping away at day by day by day, wondering when I'm going to see results or changes? What in your mind or in your life has been the next indicated step in whatever it is that you're trying to, you know, bring into your world or, you know, like accomplish because the three of pentacles comes in to tell you, good job. You've done good work. We're helping you go to the next step. We're opening that next step. And then I guess on the flip side, um, cause those of you guys know me, you know, I do not do reversed cards. A lot of readers will do upside down cards. They need that to tell them when the energy is wrong. If you're really reading energy, you don't need it to be sideways or upside down or anything like that. You're going to be able to feel it. But the flip side of the three of pentacles at times can also signal that we didn't do the work that we didn't put in the effort, that sometimes we're giving up on certain things. Sometimes we're descending in a sense and we're moving backwards. So I think you, you kind of need to look at the quality of where you've been, but I choose to make it positive because I know for me and a lot of other people that I have read for spirit won't bring in a three of pentacles unless you've been working at something and they want you to know that you either need to put in more effort or to congratulate you on putting in a certain type of effort. But let me just rewind really quickly and go back to what kind of an upgrade are we talking about? Because some people hear this and they're like upgrade. Cool, cool. What kind of upgrade? I'm going to be very real. The upgrade that comes from a three of pentacles is the type of upgrade that most of the world is not going to notice. And I mean this sincerely, but here's the thing, Kyla, you'll notice. And so the way I often describe this is kind of like everyone here or most of us, <laughs> most of us have been on a diet at some point in our life or we've been working out or we've been trying to, you know, get better at a certain thing. And this day comes where you wake up in the morning and you put on your pants or your shirt and you're like, huh, last month I couldn't really wear this. And, you know, suddenly I can. And other other people might not notice it. They might look at you, Kyla, and go, did you change your hair? What did you do? You, you did something. And you're like, only you will actually know. And so I would say look out for that. But just just – just know that with three of pentacles, it's a slow, gradual process of an upgrade. And so um, anyway, good job, whatever you're doing out there. I hope that makes yeah, sense. I think her and Dawn are putting in uh, massive amounts of work. Like them too with my, my friend Maya, they're really spiritually advancing. You know, like I, I got to give them all the props in the world. They're, yeah. they're, start, they're all starting their own podcast too. Like, it, it, you know, they told me based off of like stuff. Well, Maya does the hypnosis, but then they – you know, they got motivated from seeing my shows. So like Don has his show and Maya has her show and Kyla, Don, the one you just did a reading for, she's doing a whole bunch of like home remedy stuff where she's making like homemade butter and how to live outside the matrix type stuff. So they're really oh, doing some cool oh. stuff. Yeah. Okay. So sorry, sorry to keep adding on to this, but honestly, now that we know that, I think one of the ways in which you're going to experience that upgrade that the three of pentacles brings is in the subtle improvements of what it is that you are have that of what it is that you've been working toward. Um, especially if you're starting new projects or, or you're in early stages of things, or you've been trying to, you know, get better. Um, I would imagine you're going to notice the quality of whatever you're doing is also getting better at the same time. And anyway, that's fascinating. I hope it um, I, I did get one more cash donation, and thank you, Crystal Arguelles, because she was nice hey. enough that she uh, she she sent me a, a twenty dollars for lunch at the conference. So that's that's very appreciated, Crystal. So um, uh, her, her she says uh, a donation for reading from Matt. That's all she said. And this is oh, I can man. put her uh, avatar up on the screen. Let me find it, Crystal Arguelles. She has that funny little heart avatar. I totally. love that. I, I remember Crystal totally. I know Crystal. I think I think you sent me an email the other day. Thank you for that. Hopefully you got my a reply. But um, yeah, totally. This is for Crystal, or as I sometimes say, Crystal. She knows. Here it is. Yeah. She <laughs> says, hey, y'all, I sent a cash app yeah, room. Matthew, if you guys yeah. have time to squeeze me in, I love totally. that avatar. It's hilarious. It she reminds me of like a Betty Boop type heart or something. Totally. I don't know. I don't know why I get that from that. <sighs> Thank you, Crystal. Thank you for your support. Let's take a deep breath in. Everybody in the chat, you'll take the that breath in like eight seconds after us, but here we go. Thank 
Thank you, Crystal. I'll go into a weird direction from the start. And I want to thank everybody that's working with us in the non-physical plane because we have a very rapid response right now. You notice, or I have noticed as a person that does this work every day, sometimes I'll try to zoom in on people's energy and you kind of have to wait. <laughs> you got to like kind of wait for stuff to come in. But every every now and then I'll do this and it's like as soon as I turn over to it, it's like boom, right there. And what showed up for Crystal, hopefully, uh, I hope this makes sense. We're always going on a limb when we do this. Uh, blood sugar response and intestinal activity. And if you want to get te technical on what part of your intestine, I would say large intestine energy, which is energy of the past, stuff you're holding on to, food matter that's still working its way out of the body. Um, maybe your blood sugar is fine. I'm just giving you what shows up. It feels like there's a little bit of a minor irregularity there. Um, maybe you've noticed a slight bit of change within your sleep or your appetite or the way your body's processing food. And so maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but it might be areas to look at. That said, before I go in a weird, <laughs> in a weird medical medium, mode, we're going to, um, pull a card for you. This is for crystal three two one boom well crystal you got a queen of pentacles my lord okay you guys queen of pentacles is the queen of the physical world she's the queen of beautification she's the queen of manifestation she's a being that must have a beautiful whole intact well-arranged physical environment she thrives upon it actually she must be creating things she must be uh aiding life in growing and thriving she must be you know sometimes she's feeding people sometimes she's clothing people sometimes she's helping children grow it can be many many different things but it's all about what the queen of pentacles is creating and yet at the same time when you look at the essence of what pentacles bring into your world when you see these you know weird circular things right here a lot of people refer to them as money which i think is a reliable way to look at it but it goes far beyond that the pentacles are energy of the earth realm and to make it even more specific they are the things that we receive they are the things that we manifest and so when you have a queen of pentacles a lot of people believe that you're in a stage in which you have a lot more manifestational ability than you might have at other stages in fact the queen of pentacles you know just the fact that she is a queen she's going to be able to dictate things to the world she's going to be able to say i i want this i'm doing that we're going here we're going there and in a lot of cases when she does it right, people will follow that. But that's also where her problems come in because Queen of Pentacles is classically an energy that wants to stay put. She wants things to look good and feel good. And she's a master at, oh, and I see your comment. Boom, I feed people for a living. So she wants things to taste good as, as well. And she's a master of doing so. The problem is, is that she becomes over-reliant upon her methods. She'll do too many of the same things too many times in a row. She'll do the same thing on Tuesday every single week, and that's good. That's what makes her strong. But the flip side of pentacles is that if they're not very active or kind of constantly evolving in whatever it is that they're creating or giving to the world, in your case, it's food or a number of other things, if they're not actively evolving that, things will kind of stagnate. And so we're not going to define you as such as being in a stagnated stage. I'm just saying you got to ask yourself, what am I over-reliant upon? What sort of routines do I engage in on a daily basis that are very comfortable to me, but might be lending themselves to places in which I'm not moving forward? When this energy is in its really high vibrational stage, there's nothing you cannot manifest. You can call it out to the world and say, guys, we're going to do this. And boom, days later, you're like, and now we're doing it. You know what I mean? But you have to be able to receive. And so we could say at the same time, I know I'm adding a lot of the, to this crystal, but at the same time, one of the biggest plights of pentacle people in general, while it's not necessarily the biggest problem of queen of pentacles, but one of the issues that pentacle people have is that they need to learn how to receive things from the world differently, or they'll need to learn how to put those things to use in a different way than they've done in the past. And so it's a very good energy as long as you're not stagnating in some way. And anyway, I'll leave it there. I hope that helps crystal. Good to see you. I had my mic muted. That's fascinating. Um, that was, that was fascinating. She said one thing she says, she said she feeds people for a living. So does that tie into like, hell yeah, it does. Absolutely. I saw that. I, I, I saw that as well, which is a very cool con 
confirmation. That's definitely a Queen of Pentacles act, uh, activity. Um, in fact, in the world of queens and multidimensional tarot, she's probably the only one that's going to be feeding people. Honestly, wow. the Queen of like, dude, the Queen of Wands, she'll be feeding herself. The 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 uh, Queen of Cups is going to be feeling. She's going to be feeling for everybody. Uh, the Queen of Swords is going to be speaking for everyone. The Queen of Pentacles is going to be providing something for everyone, which is honestly where where her true strengths come in. I see your other comment. I'm a chef. I own a pub. Perfect. Honestly, you're probably that's a sign that you're doing exactly what you're meant to, to be doing in this world. So that's keep cool. It up. Keep it up. Yeah. This next one, I'm just gonna go and they so you guys yeah. that donated uh uh what do you call it? super chats? I'll go in order. Uh, this one's from Pat Windsor. She says, Hi Matt, can I have a general reading? Also a question of my timeline in the next six months. And she says, Thanks. Totally. What's up, Pat Windsor? Good to see you rolling through this strange neighborhood. Live from the astral realm. Let's kind of shuffle everything here for Pat Windsor. And also everyone else that's out there, if you want to get your question in, please do so. Uh, you know, super chat it over, send it over, PayPal. We have a really good rapid call and a response going right now. So this is a very good night to do it. But uh, in the meantime, this is for Pat Windsor. Anything that needs to be seen or heard, we'll take a breath in. Boom. And there we go. She needs to move her body or to become more physically active. There's a change that you'll experience in your well-being, whether it be energetic, whether it be physical, whether it be emotional, that's going to come right now from you build, breaking a sweat, from you pushing yourself in a way that you haven't pushed yourself in a while. I'm not saying wear yourself out. I'm not saying exhaust yourself. But there's a form of energy within you that might be keeping you in a little bit of a cycle. So if you're willing over the next few days and weeks or even months, however long it takes, takes push yourself physically. Um, if you want to get technical, some people would say start working out. It doesn't have to be that. It just feels like there's a form of energy in there that's ready to pop or move or be put to use. And it's going to happen through physical activity which is really, really very, it's very, very common. But anyway, before I go on and on, Pat Windsor, let's pull a card for you. Three, two, one, and boom. Well, it's funny because I just said you need to move around, maybe break a sweat, maybe, you know, uh, build up some energy movement in the body. And the card they gave you is kind of the opposite of that which is not really a confirmation. It's not really a denial. Maybe it's where you've been or where you are right now, but you've got a four of cups, Pat. And so for the now moment, we could say that, you know, let's be real. When the four of cups shows up in your life, you honestly probably haven't been doing that much. And there's nothing wrong with that because four of cups is not meant to be doing much. Four of Cups, you guys, and you can see the symbolism here. Four of Cups is a stage in which a person will be spending a lot of their time just wondering, just sitting there, maybe meditating. Maybe they're, you know, maybe they're trying to make ends meet. Maybe they've got big existential questions. Maybe they've been trying to understand feelings in their life. When you look at kind of the heart of what Cups resent, re represent in a person's world, Cups are emotions, their relationships, their feelings, their ideas that we share with the world that we hold on to in our emotional body. And when Four of Cups is out, you're going to be spending a lot more time asking questions of spirit and kind of wondering, you know, how will I fill the three cups? A lot of you guys have heard me say this. How do I fill those three cups in front of me? What am I meant to do about them? Why do I even have those three cups? What are they all about? And where's my fourth cup? Everyone else in the world seems to have a fourth cup, and I, I, I don't know where mine is. And, and then one day, you change your perspective on certain things. You might look in a new direction if you want to get really symbolic, and suddenly you receive an epiphany. So we could say if we go back to the beginning of this, Pat, I believe that if you become more physically active and allow yourself to get out of a four of cups, that you're going to be able to perceive the emotional goings on or what's happening in your world from a little bit of a different lens. And along with that, you're going to have a key realization that in some cases would not have come to you 
if you would have remained in four of cups, because let's be real, there's nothing wrong with this. This is actually a very healthy place for some people to be, but there's going to come a time in which you need change or you want things to be different, or you're trying to answer big existential questions. And that's when the four of cups does need to move or they need to change their perspective or learn to look at things in a new way. And so um, like, yeah, I think if, 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 you wanted to put this through the lens of maybe what might be happening in the next six months. Um, this is going to be a, a, a fun non-answer, Pat Windsor. <laughs> but seriously, if you've been asking questions about what's going to happen or when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen, one of the meanings of Four of Cups, check this out. It's that they already told you. That's literally four of cups. It's like, well, I've been asking all these questions, trying to figure out this and that. And they're like, it's right. They're trying to tell you. They told you the answer and it's right next to you. So become active, start moving, break a sweat, learn to look at things in a different way. You will receive an epiphany and totally. Anyway, I'll, I will pause there. I feel like I'm looping yeah. on your reading, Pat. That that's fascinating. That really is. I, I uh that was that was a really well um let me see here. This next one is from Arizona Raven. Good to see you, Arizona Raven Arizona Raven. Um and guys, I'm just going by the order in which you guys donated. That's the easiest oh, yeah. to do. Um and she says, Whatever Matt taps into for me is cool. And okay. Arizona Raven's like the mother to my channel. She's also really big on Indigo Angels channel too. She's a moderator for both of our channels. So she's like, uh, she's a, she's a very wonderful lady. She's really nice. No worries. I think it's good to see you, Arizona Raven. I can't show it on camera, but an interesting thing happened as soon as you, <laughs> as soon as you introduced her on the screen, I have an incense stick next to me and it like flared up in a, in a really where I'm like, what? <laughs> it was like a sudden flare up here that I wish I could have shown that on camera. That is a trip. Um, if I were to kind of aim that through the lens of multidimensional activity in your world, Arizona Raven, one way I, we could interpret that is there's a lot going on. There's a lot happening both in the physical world or especially in the non-physical world. And so I think it's important to lean into your dreams. It's important to look into symbolism. Um, it's important to, I mean this sincerely, look directly into the eyes of those that you're watching, maybe on YouTube, maybe on TV, maybe the people in your job, in the world, those who you live with, to look directly into the eyes and begin to allow a different layer of data or knowledge or communication to come through. Um, I think maybe one of the things that you've been working with or kind of stages that you're coming to in the coming months has to do with just unveiling of certain abilities that you have to read energy or to discern truth through the dense symbolism that is present within our world. And so maybe just ask yourself those questions. What have I been perceiving differently right now? Uh, what ways has, in what ways have my internal thought forms changed when I connect with people, when I listen to their voices, when I watch them on the screen, which is honestly one of the really good ways in which everyone out there can continue to test and develop your psychic abilities. And that is through the process of staring intently at the people that we view and start looking at their energy in a different way. And I don't mean from a visual perspective. It's not that you're looking for specific signs in the physicality of them. What you're looking at is what appears within your mind's eye. Earlier, we had a lady talking about how she had perceived this reptilian being in some of the work that she's doing. That's one of the things that I think will happen for you, Arizona Raven, as you lean more into viewing things from your internal lens or what some call the third eye. You're going to perceive people's energy very, very differently. It's cool because you're going to get a different layer of info and you're going to get different signals about a person. But at times it can also be really weird and awkward because then you'll look at certain people that you've been watching forever and one day you're like, what the hell? I never, I never perceived that before. And you know, every now and then you're, you're definitely right. And so anyway, not to go on and on Arizona Raven, but I think you're, you're in a heavy stage of empathic or internal intuitive activation. And anyway, I feel like I'm ranting at you. I'm going to pull a card real quick. Here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. 
Well, well, well. And then the King of Swords came in. <laughs> Arizona Raven, this is strength and power of communication. This is one of the toughest beings in the world of multidimensional tarot. Some people would look at a King of Swords, and this is for, I feel like King of Swords is for other people as well. Someone out there is going to know I'm talking about them. When the King of Swords comes into your readings, you can be kind of impenetrable. The world might be trying to give you a message. People might be trying to get through to you, or sometimes you're trying to get through to people or the world, and both the greatest strength of the King of Swords and also his big weakness is that he's damn near impenetrable. It's cool because there's going to be things in this world, Arizona Raven, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is probably you, at least on a limited level, when the King of Swords is out, you're going to be with, you're going to have had to withstand things in this life that would have killed other people. But for King of Swords, it'll come in and they're like, that? <laughs> They'll just laugh it off. They would have taken somebody else out. But for you, it'll just kind of bounce off. It's very cool because you're going to outlast many other people. But it's also awkward because at the same time, you could be covering up wounds of the heart. Or you might need to work with your crown shocker because in generality, this energy lasts. It's built to last. It's built to protect others. It is built to project its strength into the world, but it also needs to open itself up in new ways. And so anyway, to wrap up on this, the way in which you'll open yourself up, Arizona Raven, is through the manner in which you communicate. You must communicate differently with the world, or we could say you must learn to speak their language. And so I hope that helps. I'll pause there. I feel like I threw a lot at you. It's almost like being a part of the world, but not of the world. Uh, someone said that the other day on my channel. Like, is that kind of what you mean? Like have one foot in, one foot out? It, it, it certainly can be. There are a couple other characters in the world of tarot who are might be a little bit more specific in that area. But we could say that is a trait of the King of Swords because he, while he is fully present in the world, it's that people that have true King of Swords energy will often have had to build a hard external layer of energy. It keeps them safe. It keeps them strong. It's what allows them to persist when other people would not have been able to. But later on at a certain point, and some of you guys have heard this, so this is kind of old news. I say it all the time, but for those of you guys that can see this card, hopefully my lighting's okay, you'll notice, at least in Robin Wood Tarot, King of Swords always has his arms crossed. He's always covering the heart. And so from a symbolic perspective, that's because we tend to still have a wound inside us. And King of Swords is badass because he can be saving everyone else's life. He'll be saving your life, pulling you off the battlefield. He'll be slaying demons, you know, whatever it takes. He doesn't care. It's nothing to him. But at the same time, he'll be bleeding out underneath his armor. And he's still going. He's like, yeah, I got it. And he does. He's got it. But at a certain point, we have to go, oh, shit, I have this huge hole here that I have to work with. And so you, you could. You could have one foot in one realm, one foot in the other. And anyway, I feel like I'm going on and on there. But I love that, man. That's that's cool. Oh, wait, oh gosh. Look who's up next. Uh -oh, dun, dun, dun. Hey. The Andromedan. <laughs> he's always the troublemaker. It's okay. It's good. Everybody, everybody needs one. You, you are an essential part of this uh, community. Community, yeah. Thank you for being here. Um, anything from the collective? Yeah, it's very, very good to see you. Let's take a deep breath in. Okay, I'm going to start out by saying. Andromedan, I think you're the first one tonight that I'm having a little bit of a hard time grabbing onto, and the reasons for that could be many. It feels like on some level you might be forcing yourself to kind of close your heart or to shield the intensity of emotions or thought forms or just the flow of energy that is within you. Um, it feels like you have had a little bit of turbulence in your internal world and you're kind of learning to limit your reactions and moderate intensity, which is a good thing, but it feels like there's a, a force of energy within you that wants to be released. It wants to be expressed. And I would say just do not limit yourself in the realism and just the truth of who and what you are. It feels like you're in a positive. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. You're, you're in, you're in a positive growth phase, learning new tools of emotional regulation. Um, if there was an energy center that I would be working with uh, for you, it would be the bottoms of your feet and what people call the earth star chakra. It has a big effect on who you are connected to and why, and the manner in which you relate to physical reality. And um, it feels like it's a little bit disconnected. I don't mean fully disconnected. I'm not a proponent of saying that the entire chakra system will get deactivated. Some people out there have a lot of opinions on how that works. They definitely get suppressed and they get limited in their connectivity. And it feels like you have a little bit of that in the earth star. But um, I would say just allow the intensity and the wildness of who and what you are. It's going to have a very maturing effect. And anyway, I feel like I'm ranting at you here. Let me pull a card for Andromeda. Here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. Whoa, an unexpected character rolls in the room. Um, Andromeda, you have a seven of swords. A lot of people see a seven of swords in old world tarot and they see this guy and he's cloaked and he looks kind of dark and he's got these swords under his coat and people look at a seven of swords and they're like, the hell's that guy up to? What's going on with him? He's, he's got to be doing something wrong. Look at him. He's hiding. He's got all these swords. He looks sneaky. I wonder if in your world Andromeda, and sometimes people look at you and they're like, What's up with that guy? What's you know, what, <laughs> what's he all about? Or maybe they encounter you in the internet world and they're like, "What the hell?" Here's the thing: <laughs> don't ever let people, don't ever let this become a negative thing for you. Because in old world tarot, most people see seven of swords and they're like, "Oh man, something's hidden. Something might be deceptive." I gotta be real. Every now and then, if the nature of the question is around that, it's a good indicator. But when it shows up in a one-card reading in a moment like this, like I was just saying, there's certain things that you might be hiding. There's certain pieces of you that you might be suppressing. And maybe it hasn't been safe for you to truly be yourself. Maybe it hasn't been okay for you to truly express the full essence of who and what you are. Because when we look at what, what, what do swords really mean, you guys? Swords are thoughts. They're speech. They're words. They're the look on your face. They're the clothes that you wear. They're your body language. They're your especially, especially, they are your tone of voice. And so when you have a seven of swords, sometimes you're suppressing things within you. Sometimes you're hiding the truth of what you are. Every now and then you have to. Seven of swords comes in and you're like, oh man, I got to keep this under wraps. There's no way. There's no way the world can know about this or that about me. And it's usually real. It's usually for a good reason. Every now and then, like I've already said, it can signal deception. Well, we're not going to define you as such, Andromeda. I'm just giving you all the pieces of the puzzle so you can kind of look at it in your own way. Even if it was, let's say, even if it was about deception, maybe let's say worst case scenario, Andromeda, and you're like, yeah, I realize I've been lying to myself about this or that or this thing. The antidote for Seven of Swords is that there's something within you that needs to be brought out to the light of day. It needs to be shown to everyone, and it could be many things. But um, honestly, it's a it's a very cool energy to have. I love when Seven of Swords comes in because it's meant to make you go, "Huh, what's going on there?" It's 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 meant to make you look deeper. And so, anyway, I know I'm going on and on, Andromeda, but look. I deeper. thought it was interesting that he got that cloaked character with the sword because that kind of represents like how his internet personality is. You know that. that <laughs> It's 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 and I'm not getting on him. I I, I love the Andromeda. Okay. He's awesome. You know, it's I'm just kind of you know, it's just like it kind of matched up with like his internet personality. If that makes any sense. I think so. it does. I think it does. I think honestly, I I think it's cool, and I love it when Seven of Swords comes in. Because let me tell you what, everyone that sees a Seven of Swords in this world, whether it's good or bad, right or wrong, they're gonna be like, whoa, huh. What's going on there? I would say use it to your advantage. And anyway, yeah, I will, I will awesome. pause there. The next one's from Leanna King. And uh, I'll see here. Okay. Uh, she says, did yeah. the eclipse push me on two of my highest, best timeline? I, I never, I didn't talk to you when the eclipse was going on. I, I didn't know what you felt about that. I did a lot of shows on the eclipse. Like, I, I don't know if you have an opinion on it, but, you know. You know, 
I I'll just comment on that really quickly. Don't worry, Leanna. We're definitely going to get to you. I I gotta be real. Some so there's going to be a couple of people in the chat that will be like, "What, really, Matthew? Oh my god!" I gotta be real. I was hoping for a major event. I was hoping for a massive <laughs> up, up upheaval or an overturning or some sort of a grand tragic show on the world stage you know i was i was looking forward to the devil's comet remember that one people were like the devil's comet's going to pass by and it's going to this or that yeah. i was actually looking forward to it and i want to be real not because you know i thrive on the destruction of this world that's not what i mean what i mean is that i think we as a collective could benefit and sometimes do benefit greatly from the catalyst that comes from great upheaval and to me, it felt like the world's greatest, you know, waste of time. And that's not to say that each person in their individual path did not experience a change or a graduation or a step forward. I think what I noticed with the eclipse was that it was much more an individual timeline shift or indicator rather than a mass worldwide event. And I think we're going to see this with a lot of stuff that gets trumped up or, you know, pumped up and, you know, on the world stage, anytime they have to make a show about it in the media throughout the world, it's usually because, and I know there's many layers to this, but they're trying to get us to manifest certain things. It's part of a mass ritual to get us as a population to agree to certain things, to have them happen. Because if we all agree that it's going to be a disaster, it will inevitably become one. And I think what happened with this eclipse was that, you know, some of the bigger players or, you know, what we call the powers that be or were on the earth plane were trying to get us to buy into it on such a level that we created it. And I think it was a success from the perspective that clearly we as a population didn't. We were like, yeah, no, we're not going to play that. And it didn't happen. And, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, well, there's this 40 day period that happens afterward in which all those changes come about. Sure, there is. If you want to get technical and watch the news, people are talking about this Israel Iran thing. You know, they're talking about this. And I was that. just going to ask you about that. It's like they're trying to start war. It's like maybe that right. things didn't work out with the eclipse. And now they're trying to start war. I no. think that's, exa that's exactly what it is. I, I'm not so crazy to think that it's only that. I know it's a lot. It's a lot more than that. But I think a lot of it was to manifest certain things. And we as a population were like, nope, we're not doing it. But that does not negate the idea that each person in their own world did have a timeline shift. Because when you look at the heart of what an eclipse does, and a lot of you guys have heard me say this before, but whenever there's an eclipse alignment, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, which some people will not agree on, but the reality is that energy is available on all corners of, of the globe. And what will happen is when there's an eclipse alignment, we have an ability to send a message or to connect directly with what some people call source energy, the higher self, the guides that are connected with you on a much greater level. And so some people that really use that energy can create massive, massive changes. But the reality is eclipses happen all the time. They're happening constantly. Every so often on the earth plane, there's an eclipse. It was just a notable one because of where it was going and what was trying to be manifested. But I noticed that in my life, um, there was a great shifting of certain energies. I think there was a corner turn. I know for me, you know, I've been trying to create this book and I'm starting a new program and it feels like we made positive headway toward the creation of those things. And also, I mean, honestly, a lot of people die around eclipses. Just yesterday, uh, one of my uncles passed on. I was not very close with him, so it's not a big sting, you know, in our family. But, you know, we do observe his life. And, you know, like, yeah, that, those are things that will happen around those periods. Sorry for your loss, man. That's, that's tough. you know, it's always yeah, tough to lose anybody, you know. I feel you. It, it, I mean, it is. And, you know, how there's always people in our family that we're not connected with, so we don't really have much of an emotional reaction. But it's always sad to watch them leave this world. But one one of the things we notice is that when it happens around an eclipse alignment, it was destined. That's a that's a very common checking out point and a checking in point for people that will enter this world and leave this world around those times. Um, one of the people that got me started in doing this work that I'm doing right now, of which there's only been literally two really in this whole life, but one of the people that got me started told me to always look out for deaths when the eclipse happens because they used to call them king killers back in the old days and an eclipse would happen and some sort of a, a coup would take place or an overturning or a revolution would happen around that time and that would often signal the timeline shifting and Anyway, I'll, I will go on and on about it, but 
No, that's interesting. Yeah. That was, yeah. Anyway, we got Leanna King here. Sorry, Leanna. She's probably like, I thought we were going to do a reading, but here we go. <laughs> uh, for those of you guiding Leanna King on her highest timeline as a result of whatever this eclipse brought upon us, can you just give us a signal of that? Here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. Whoa. Okay. Wow. Leanna King. You know, I think this goes above and beyond the eclipse. I'm going to be real. But let's just say, and just for the record, everyone that's watching at home here in your own corner of the multiverse, this is the Seven of Pentacles. It is one of the most opportunistic energies you can receive in the world of tarot. Very opportunistic. In fact, we just had Easter recently, right? Some of you guys know this. I saw Aurora Diamond Heart in the chat. She knows exactly what I'm going to say. But when the Seven of Pentacles comes into your life, you guys, one of the ways you can think about it is kind of like an Easter egg hunt. And, you know, for those of you guys that did Easter egg hunts or you have kids and you do Easter egg hunts, the whole idea behind the Easter egg hunt is you know damn well those eggs are out there. You know they are. They're placed there specifically so that you'll find them, right? It's the whole idea. Think of the Seven of Pentacles like a multidimensional Easter egg hunt where the things that you've been seeking have been placed in your physical environment, in your world, in your timeline. It's cool if you're willing to get dirty. It's cool if you're willing to go out into the yard or in the world and start turning over rocks and looking in ditches and looking underneath cushions on your couch and going to places that you normally wouldn't go to. And you're like, well, I would have never found that if I hadn't have turned right instead of turning left one day. The seven of pentacles will bring this into your life, Leanna. And I, I guess the sad part is, is while, yes, the things that you've been seeking in your world, in your timeline are more available to you now than they've ever been. The problem is none of them will come to you. None of them are going to email you. None of them are going to text you. None of them are going to say, hey, Leanna, I'm out here underneath this rock in your yard. It'll never happen. You got to get dirty. You must become adventurous in your seeking. If you're willing to do so, you're nearly guaranteed to benefit in ways that earlier in the year or at another time in your life, you wouldn't even have seen it. You wouldn't even have known it was there. You would have passed right by it and never thought to look under that bush. And instead, this time you do and you find a $100 bill or I don't know what you find, but you'll find something that would not have been found otherwise. So anyway, Leanna, I, I think this goes beyond your eclipse. But if you want to bring it into the realm of the eclipse itself, into the heart of your question, am I on my highest and best timeline? Um, you're on one of many. One of many. And if you want to get super technical, that's going to be a, a factor for us for the rest of our life. We're going to be switching timelines and different frameworks of reality constantly based upon your decisions, the most prevalent emotion in your body, the thought forms that you're embracing, the desires that you have, million things that will cause us to shift and change timelines. We have a seven of pentacles. Spirit's trying to tell you that there's way more available to you right now than you can perceive in your immediate environment. So become adventurous. And anyway, I feel like I'm going on and on. But this is a really good card to get, you guys. Just be willing to get dirty. Seriously, be willing to get dirty. You're going to find something amazing. And anyway, I'll pause there. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. I love, I love the, the, the metaphorical analysis of the Easter egg hunt. That's a great, it's a great, it's a great way to put it, you Thank know. You. It's kind of all I do these days. So I have I have a bunch of cheesy stories for every single card, which sorry to instantly start going on and on again. But for those of you guys trying to read tarot, a lot of you guys have heard me say this. One of the number one ways in which you will find out how to internalize the meaning of each card is to create a relationship with them. Treat them as characters in a movie. Treat them as friends and family begin to form a story around what they represent. It's going to be one of the things that's going to cement the knowledge of what they are into your mind's eye. And so anyway, I'll leave it there. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, I'll, uh, I'll get to the next one. Uh, we cool. still got one, two, three, four, five. Bring them on. Let's do it. Bring them on. <laughs> it's all good. This one's from my friend Maya from SOS QHT. Hi, Maya. Good to see you. She says, any messages from my higher self? And am I still safe and protect? She says, and just before you get into that, I'm just going to turn my camera off real quick because I got to go to the bathroom. And oh, I'll, it's I'll all be good. Right yeah, 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 do it, do and it. Yeah, it's all okay, good. I'll, 
We just hijacked Rob's show, you guys. He's not going to know anything that's happening right now. So we're free to say all the prohibited keywords and all of the... <laughs> we're going to use every single prohibited AI keyword on YouTube. Are you ready? Here we go. Um, but anyway, this is for SOSQHT. What's going on? Everybody put a bunch of cuss words in the chat. Say a bunch of super negative. No, actually don't. But you know what I mean. Um, anyway... We've just hijacked the typical skeptic podcast live from the eighth sphere. Anyway, here we go. SOS QHT three. Oh, word. he's already back. Oh my Don't god. Write no word. Don't write the V word. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> I, I won't even say it. Don't worry. You never know. Or maybe or maybe it's the T word now. I hear the T word is one we can't we're not allowed to say again. Or or is it oh, the E god. word? I don't even know what those stand for. Anyway, here we go. SOS. QHT, three, two, one, and boom. Whoa, okay. Well, 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 if you want to make it about messages from the higher self, or if you want to just make it about messages in general, if you want to make it about being safe and protected even, well, hey, man, if there's one thing we can say about Eight of Pentacles, you guys, you're very well shielded from certain things in the world. If it's about being safe, Eight of Pentacles is very safe. In fact, you know, you might be spending most of your time in the same room, doing the same things, building something, working on something, chipping away at something. Um, it is safe. It is protected. But honestly, those aren't really concerns of the Eight of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles comes into your life, SOSQHT, in a period in which you're doing something very, very real. And I think if you want to make it about a message from your higher self, one of the messages of Eight of Pentacles is that at this stage of your life, nobody can ever look at an Eight of Pentacles and say, you're fake. You're not doing anything. It's impossible. Nobody would. No one's ever going to look at an Eight of Pentacles and go, that's not real. You're not building anything. You're not doing anything. I mean, look at the heart of what it is. You've learned how to recreate yourself over and over and over again during the course of this life. Look at all you've built. It's hanging on the walls around you. Sure, when you look at him, you realize, well, yeah, maybe I did do the same thing over and over again, just different versions of it in different colors. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. I guess if you want to look at all the pieces of the puzzle, yeah, we might have a tendency to repeat things over and over again, but you're in a process of refining what it is that you're creating. You're going to be making it better and better and better. You're going to be whittling away at things and improving skills and the manner in which you manifest things. And so if it's about messages from your higher self, they want you to know that you're for real, that whatever it is that you're engaging in and doing is deeply authentic, and you're going to be able to continue to do it. You're going to be able to continue to repeat something in your world. But at the same time, when you really look at the symbolism of an Eight of Pentacles, you notice that, uh, you know, they're kind of just in this little room, in this little area. They've got their back turned to certain things in the outer world. There's nothing wrong with it per se, but there will come a time with Eight of Pentacles where you will desire to reach more people. You will desire to be more seen. You will desire to be more a part of. You will come to a stage in which you begin to realize the value of what you've been creating. And one of the problems with the Eight of Pentacles is that sometimes the world won't see what you're creating. And it's not because it's bad or good. It's got nothing to do with that. It's absolutely real and authentic. The problem is, is that they need to take it to a new location. We could say, symbolically, you might need to take all those things you've been building over the past few years and go outside into the outer world, bring it to a new location. Some of us within our community get stuck in a little bit of a niche or in a little bit of an area or in a little bit of a channel or a thing. And Eight of Pentacles, while it's real, it can get kind of stuck in a place. You know what I mean? It'll just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And once you bring that to a new crowd, a new family, a new location, a new scene, you will be seen on an entirely different level for the value that you hold. And so... Um, Anyway, this is a very good omen. As long as you're be, as long as you're willing to put yourself out there in a in a place that you might have turned your back to previously, it can be very very good for people. And so, anyway, wow. I'll pause there. That's really that's a really good that's a really good. I, I like that. Yeah. Um, 
One of my supplements Uh-oh. fell off my desk. <laughs> yeah, I got a little bit desk, of a disaster over there. I really got to clean off my desk. It's it's, it's, a, a, it's a disaster zone, and that's not good. You know, like that's uh. I can't feel you, man. Um, uh, this one's from Jazz B. Oh, Jazz B. I know Jazz. Yeah, What's she up, says Jazz? any message from the higher self or spirit guide, and she says thank you. Totally, Jazz B. Thanks for showing up. Let's pull. Let's pull a card. Okay, I'll just say it. Um, you need. You got to trust yourself way more. There's things that you're perceiving. There's truths that you've been able to pick up. There's things that you've been kind of interpreting within your energetic realm, within your thought forms. You've probably even noticed people have said things to you, and you're like, "Wait a minute! I think they actually mean this," or "I think you know they actually feel that," or they say this thing over here, but I'm feeling this other thing on the other side, and which one's real? It's probably not real. It's probably just in my mind. I'm sure that's not actually happening. There's no way that could be true. In my opinion, based on what I'm feeling coming from the body right now, you're experiencing claircognizance or in a bit of an upgrade in claircognizance, which technically, if you want to get into a healing lens through it, you're going to need to clear your intestines a little bit more. That can be large intestine. It could be small intestine. Um, basically, what you're going to be doing is clearing out that pathway so you can perceive more accurately what is true. But i got to be real. It feels like you already have a very good sense of that. So you need to have faith and trust in yourself. And that said, let's pull a card. Here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. Well, we're in pentacle land tonight, you guys. Damn. <laughs> A lot of yeah, pentacle really, cards, man. right? Like so many of them. Jazz B, you got a knight of pentacles. He has some similarities to the king of swords who we saw earlier, that really tough guy with a giant sword and all kinds of armor. He's got some similarities to king of swords from the perspective that he is nearly impenetrable. Things are going to come at you, Jazz, in this world. They're going to try to hit you. They're going to try to knock you off their horse. They're going to try to take you down. And trust me, they won't. They're not going to be able to do it. You're going to be able to withstand a lot of things. And the truth is, you're going to look pretty good while you're doing it. I got to be real. Knight of Pentacles is one of the most prepared, one of the most set up, one of the most ready energies that you can have in the world of tarot. However, while they are damn near impenetrable, while they do have the style, while they're all set up, they definitely look the part. You look really closely at him and you realize, well, his face is exposed. It's the only part that shows through his armor, which means a very important thing. Your emotional body, your expressions, the manner in which you express yourself and show your feelings is critically important for the Knight of Pentacles. In fact, they can get tripped up there. They can get affected in their emotional body. They can lose faith in themselves. A person in the world could look at you as a Knight of Pentacles the wrong way. You'll be like, what? And Knight of Pentacles will be like, oh. you know, they'll feel judged. They'll feel unseen at times. And the whole thing about Knight of Pentacles is that they're the most prepared for a certain job or, or a certain thing or a task. And they can wait their whole life for the world to recognize them. They'll see everyone else out there doing the thing that they're meant to do. And they'll be like, well, when is it going to be my turn? When am I going to be welcomed? When am I going to be asked? When am I going to be invited? And the sad truth is they tend to not get any of those things. And it's, it's nothing, it's not a bad or good right or wrong thing. It's just that the Knight of Pentacles doesn't need to be invited. They don't need to be asked. They don't need to be given permission. They were born with it. They inherited it. They came into this life with whatever that thing is. And so they, they have to self-recognize. And you have authorization, Jazz. It's funny because I was saying you got to trust yourself in terms of your extrasensory perception right now. Knight of Pentacles was born with a certain ability that at a certain stage in this life, and it could be many different abilities, doesn't matter what it is, but they're going to come to a stage where they just start doing it. They'll just walk in where with everyone else engaged in a thing, and they're like, okay, I'm here. And when they do it right, nobody will question it. They'll be like, oh, yeah, of course. You've always been here, right? Right? And they haven't. They just walked in the door. But Knight of Pentacles is a remarkably powerful energy. And anyway, I realize I'm going on and on on this guy, but – let me just make one last point, Jazz B. Yes, you're ready. Yes, you inherited it. Yes, you have authorization to begin. Yes, you have the style. Yes, you have the protection. Beautiful things, right? But you're not going anywhere with a lot of it. 
And I'm not judging you or saying that's the reality for you. I'm just giving you the pieces of Knight of Pentacles. And one of the big things we notice about Knight of Pentacles is that they tend to just stand there, like waiting for some kind of clue or thing that doesn't come. And so um, just be sure you got to self-start. This guy has to self-start in some way. Um, and so anyway, I'll, I will go on and on on that. I got a million stories for every card, but I pray that finds you well. Thanks for hanging That's out. That's fascinating. That, that was a great you, – you're, I always say this. You're the best reader that does readings on my show. Like, I, you really are. I mean, like, I mean, you're able to – you have a natural intuition, like, where you're able to tap into each person, but then you know the cards well, too. So it's like – it's like it's Thanks. amazing. Um, but uh, this I, next one's from Honeybee and Rusty. Or I, I think her name is hey. Melissa, right? Yeah, I remember, yeah. She says, yeah. "Quick reading, if time permits, please." She said, "Totally, there is there is time." And 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 first off, thank you for saying that, Rob. That that means a lot to me. A lot of you guys know what I'm going to say next. I never knew this is what I was going to do in this life. I did not know this was what was in store for me. It's funny because I, you know, now it's all I do. But up until age 40, or honestly, right around age 39. I was really stuck in a whole different body, in a whole different path in this world, on a whole different timeline. And I had to make one of those massive leaps of faith and, and say, okay, I think there's a different reality. There's a different, you know, experience for me. And um, I think that I, if anything, I am a testament to the fact that when you really truly let go of whatever it is that you think you know about yourself, whatever it is that you think you are, when you allow spirit to really become present in your life, good or evil, right or wrong, which is a dicey thing to say, but we're going to encounter all of those energies in this life. When you really give yourself over to that spiritual process of intuitive development or, you know, whatever you want to call it, miracles were happen will happen because you know, gra granted, prior to doing this work, I never really had any success in anything. I fumbled around in a lot of different identities through a lot of different timelines, millions of different jobs. You know, for a long time, I would just played. I just played music for years. That was the only thing that I did. And I'll be real; even that didn't really work out. But it was the closest I had ever gotten to kind of understanding who and what I was. Then it was only when I turned forty where I finally jumped in and realized, okay, I'm going to do this. And what I noticed in that journey was that no one really taught me. And some people cringe when they hear me say this. I never took a single tarot class in my life. I have never read a tarot book. I've skimmed through a few of them. I've watched some videos on YouTube, but it was like a bizarre switch that turned in my turned on in my body at a certain stage. And I think that I am a testament to the fact that that can happen to many of us. Maybe not everyone, but every single one of us has a channel of knowledge and an ability buried within their body. And when you really let go and allow that to happen, miracles will take place. And anyway, sorry to go on and on, honeybee and rusty. Here we go. Good man. I, I was the same way. I uh I, I was 40 years old when I started to when I decided to do my podcast and I never thought it would turn into what it was. And now I'm getting compliments from people on the way I interview people and like the, uh, I, I had a guy reach out to me on Instagram today and I'm not, I'm not like, and I'm not like, I'm not ever bragging because I don't think I'm anything special, but the guy said I changed his life two years ago just from watching my show. And I was like, wow. I mean, it's like, that means that, like I'm getting through to people. And I think the same thing is happening to you with your tarot. Like you're changing people. You're helping people. You're like, you know, like, it's like, you're really having an effect on people the way they, you know, Thank see this reality and, and, and their spiritual development, you know? Thank you very, very sincerely. A lot of people say that when you hit 40, that is the true beginning of adulthood in this life. And everything that you do up until right around that first, that fourth decade are merely transitions and experiments in who it is that you thought you've been who you were in other lives, unsolved business or unhealed certain things. And for those of us that really embrace it and work through certain pathways or heal certain wounds, and it could happen at age 30, it could happen at age 50. It doesn't, it's not so much time dependent, but for a lot of people that are going through this human journey alongside us, you'll notice inevitably that right around when we hit the fourth decade in your human journey, some people tend to have a massive change. For me, it was that I started doing this work. For you, it was that you started doing the podcast. And for other people, it's going to be this. For other people, it's going to be that. It doesn't matter what it is, but 
I would say take that as a sign that you are doing the thing that you are meant to do. And granted, those always change. You know what I mean? By the time both you and I are 50, we might be on a whole other thing doing a whole other, you know, whatever it is. But you will notice that a certain force will kind of come in at this stage of the journey. And, you know, there's a lot older people that watch this show. I think they would agree that that happens. And also there's a number of other changes that take place later on. Then there's a lot of younger people that will watch this show that I think will benefit from understanding that everything that you're going through in your 20s and your 30s is setting you up for this stage of becoming that often takes place right now in your 40s. And, you know, granted, we're all in a different age range, but for us, you and I right now. And anyway, I will go on and on. Sorry, honey, being rusty. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. <sighs> Thanks for hanging out. What's important? What do we need to know for honey being rusty? You underestimate the power of your voice. You underestimate the ability to generate clarity and to help other people come to understandings of what they've been through and what they've had to endure. I would say maybe in general you kind of underestimate your abilities. I might be wrong, but it feels as though um, you might be keeping things a little bit contained or a little bit safe. You only you're going to know. I'm just describing the the kind of empathic feeling that comes through. But <sighs> let's pull a card. Here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. Whoa. Okay. Damn. At least it's not a pentacle card. For those of you guys that have been watching along here, playing along during this episode of Typical Spective, Skeptic, you've noticed many of the cards have been pentacles. This is the first non-pentacle card we've had in quite some time. And Honey Bee Rusty, it is the Emperor, which is a hell of a sign to get. A few seconds ago, Rob, I was literally saying, there's these things and changes and this identity shift that happens when we get in, you know, right around our 40s. This is literally the symbol of that. This wow. is the literal symbol of maturity, of we could say full ownership, of taking complete responsibility for who and what we are. When the emperor comes into your life, it is time for you to take full ownership over your identity, over your power, over your control, over your abilities, over your direction, over the ways in which you command reality. If there's one thing we know about an emperor, honey, being rusty, the emperor doesn't ask anyone for anything. They don't ask for permission from the world. They don't say, please, may I experience this? Can I maybe have that? Nothing, nothing like that. What they do is they tell the world what they want. They command it. And that's also where problems come in because the emperor takes on a lot of roles, which can seem odd. One of them is the voice of your father. One of them is the voice of your male ancestry. One of them is the aspects of your masculinity, what some people even call the patriarchy and the way in which it is present within your behavior spectrum or within, you know, how you define yourself. This guy can be those. He could be the good version. He can be the bad version. He can be negative controlling. He could also be the ruler that everyone wants to hang out with. He's going to be the guy that everyone wants to have at their party. Why? Well, because he pays for a lot of stuff and he commands his own presence, which, you know, sometimes that's what the emperor does. He just takes care of everyone and pays for everything. But at other times, he becomes a benevolent, charismatic ruler within one's own process of growth that when you do it right, it's one of those stages where you'll see you'll see people that are very old, you know, they'll be in their 80s or something. And their energy and their charisma and sometimes their body is going to be like someone that's way younger. They're going to still be relevant. They're going to still be, you know, present. They're going to be fully there and fully in control of all of their faculties. And so it's a, it's, a po it's a sign of positive maturation that will take place in the human journey if you're willing to take full control and ownership. And yet at the same time, the downfall of the emperor's energy, which is kind of similar to the empress, although the empress operates in the feminine realm and feminine ancestry and the voice of your mother. The downfall of the emperor is that you can try to repeat something that you did at an earlier stage of your journey. Maybe like, I don't know, I don't know how old you are. I'm just going to put out date ranges. You know, let's say back in the 90s or in the early 2000s. You were doing this, you were doing that, you were a big player in this, or you were really involved in what X, Y, and Z, and you'll come to the emperor stage, and you'll be like, you know what? 
I'm going to go back and do it how I did it then. I used to love this. I used to be involved in it all the time. We used to do this every day. And Emperor will try to go back and do it the way they did it in the old days, and it will not work. It just won't. People will look at you and go, are you serious? Really? You're doing that? Oh, man, really? I mean, that's so old school. I mean, everybody knows. It's old news now. When the emperor is stagnated, people look at them and they seem very dated and they're very out of touch. And that's because the emperor cannot repeat anything from a previous cycle. It won't work. What they must learn to do is to reinvent themselves in a completely new way. They bring it up to what we might call 2024 standards. You know, they they revitalize things, you know, they turn it around and do it in a whole different way. And when you do that, it's something that will keep you going and you'll be going and going and going. But um, it's a very powerful energy. So anyway, I'm going on and on, honey, being rusty, but you must embrace the controlling elements within you and learn to use them in a benevolent, charismatic way. And um, anyway, I hope this finds you well. Thanks for I hope that resonates with you well, uh, Melissa. That was uh, that was amazing. That was a. Uh, um, let me see here. This one's from my good friend Angel Lori. Uh, good to see you, Lori. Um, she says, "Hi, Matt. A general reading, please, and thank you." Lori's another person that's just like really on the path, man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. she, she's really opened up a lot. She's done a lot of hypnosis sessions with Maya, and she's like really on another level. You know, like. Plus, she has the coolest dog in the world. She knows I think that. She has this <laughs> the coolest yeah, I Siberian husky. I think I've seen him on uh, Facebook, actually. I have. Yeah. Yeah, he's totally. cool as hell. He's like a person, you know? Totally. He really is. <sighs> Some of you guys will find this because I'm going to speak it onto your uh, mobile device. But it's funny that you mentioned huskies because right before I came in here, I was watching a video on Twitter, or I guess it's X now. And it was a video of this dog that went missing somewhere in Russia and they were using a drone to find him. And the Husky went and found a family of bears and was literally living and hanging out with a family of bears. And there's an actual <laughs> video. Dude, it's amazing. It's amazing. This Husky just goes out to, like into the wilderness and they're like, he's like, yeah, dude, I'm just going to live with these bears. And you, they, you watch this drone flying around. And the Husky's chilling with them, hanging out with them, sleeping with them. They're just like, yeah, I'm going to go stay with the bears. And anyway. It's that's a amazing, thing. dude. That's a, I got. Where do I see this at? I want to watch it. Um, I know it's on Twitter right now. Oh, actually, Aurora Diamondheart in the chat says she posted it the other day, so it's somewhere on her profile. But she posts like a million things. See, so she, she's amazing. She's she's amazing too. She finds the best memes and internet stuff. Like she, oh, I always totally, try to right? send her funny stuff I find on the internet, but she tops it. She always finds the best stuff. Like totally that picture, the astrology one she sent me. Oh my god, that was so hilarious. Did you see that one? I don't know, maybe. I don't know, maybe. It's maybe. the one. It's it's like an astrology chart, but it's really the the guy that did the pornos. It's like it's like the the picture of the astrology, but it's like the porno guy in the background. The maybe. guy that everybody uh, was making those memes out of during oh, COVID. Yeah, 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 they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, they did one for OJ as well. I noticed where they're like OJ finally admitted on his deathbed, and then you click on it, and it's that dude like sitting there. It's like, <laughs> You know, but anyway, yeah. Thank, thank you, Aurora Diamond Heart. You're one of the most successful serial shit posters out there. Anyway, Angel Lori, thanks for hanging out. Here we go. <sighs> back to the heart of the moment, back to the astral plane. Here we go. Angel Lori, anything that needs to be known? Here we go. Three, two, one, and whoa. Okay. Damn. You got the lovers, Angel Lori. It's a beautiful sign. This is one of those moments, you guys, in the world of multidimensional tarot, the lovers and the two of cups, and I think there's a couple others. The true meaning of this energy is going to be something a little bit different for each person who receives it because the lovers encompasses many different types of energies and experiences. It can be love for the self it can be love between yourself and another. For some people, it's the path of romance. For some people, it's the path of intimacy. For others, it's a very particular path of self-healing where we come to full acceptance over who and what we are. And then, you know, likewise, for other people, it can be embracing the divine masculine and the divine feminine aspects of whatever it is that you're working with or whatever is going on in your world. Just know that when it comes in, usually 
you're going to get your own ideas about it. And so, Angel Lori, I want you to look at this and simply allow your mind and your heart to speak to you. Because the lovers, it's a very, very unique energy that must remain open to interpretation of the beholder. And why? Why is that? Because for each one of us, it means something a little bit different. You know, you might look at this and go, oh, yeah, that's me and so and so. Other people will look at it and go, oh, my God, I wish I could have that. Some people look at the lovers and they're like, yeah, I don't want anything to do with that right now. I already did it. I'm over it. I'm on a solo journey. It really depends on what you're seeking and where you are within your path of love. And, you know, once again, love for the self, love for others, embracing of divine masculine and feminine characteristics. But most of the time, it's going to come with some form of acceptance where you're willing to join in union with another person and embrace what is. And it's one of those energies that should not be judged. It should not be taken lightly at the same time because it's very, very unique for each of us. And so I would say just take a moment to look at where you are in this spectrum and understand that when it shows up as a symbol on your timeline, which it is right now, they're asking you to embrace whatever this represents to you. And anyway, I think it's a really cool energy to get. But uh, like I said, only you know what it's really about. And so, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. Shall that's, pause and, there. Um, I, wow. Um, okay. Um, I was, we have three more. So, you know, like we're, we're, we, we're, we're, we're approaching the two hour mark. So I was, so I, good. I, yeah. But we're, we're, I'm not in any, here, you know. Um, this oh, yeah, is from Steve Bush. He says, hi, Rob. Hi, Matthew. I hope you're doing great. Are you able to tell me who is around me or what's going on in my home? Thank you. Okay, I know a little bit about this. She's had abduction marks on her hands or what – I don't know what else to call them. That's what they look like to me. And then she had some kind of entity right on her TV, like and, – and other stuff too. She's had other markings on her body. And she, she, I feel like she suspects she's being taken or some, she's having contact with some kind of entities, but she doesn't know what it is. Yeah. That's very it, good to know. Fascinating. It really is. It really is fascinating. That's very good to know. I'm going to say some crazy things to you, Shiba Winu, because you're very available on the astral plane. If you've been wondering, have I been picked up? Have I been worked with? Have certain beings been viewing me or interacting with my energy? Uh, based on what we're being presented here and the kind of what I would call the subtle vibrations of your auric field, yes, 100%. You may even have had some, and this is always a dicey new age term. Some people cringe when I say this. You've probably had some alterations that have taken place within your DNA based upon your family line and your own unique genetics that have further enabled you to be available on the astral plane. If I were to say who it is, which I'm not always that good at, um, it feels like a number of different beings. If you want to make it about grays or gray energy, it feels like that's definitely a factor for you. Uh, but I'm not one of those people that quotes planets or races, which I'm going to be real. Sorry to divert from the path here, but you guys are going to find a million people out there. And they're like, you've got Arcturian energy. You've got Pleiadian energy. You've got Syrian energy. You've got this energy. And, you know, a lot of you guys have heard me say this before, but how come in a galaxy of billions upon billions of different life forms are we on Earth stuck in the six flavors of ET energy? Because most of the beings that I've encountered when I have worked with people that have had real extraterrestrial, higher dimensional energies around them, they don't give names. They don't say, I'm from this planet. I'm one of the Pleiadians. Never. They never, ever do that. And I think most of the time when people hear those words, those are human-made terms that essentially we're using them to describe things that are, un are indescribable to a lot of us. And so if I were to put a label on it, which I just said not to do, <laughs> but if I were to put a label on it, it feels like you have some involvement with what some people call Zeta Grays, although I don't think they're Zeta Grays. I don't even think they're called Zetas. I think they're one of the ET groups that might look in a visual form kind of like a gray being. Um, you have some of that energy around you. I think you've had reptilian visitations, but that looks like more like aspects of yourself, perhaps, like versions of you on alternate timelines. But just in general, I feel like you're very available on the astral plane. And I think if you're experiencing, you know, things like scoop marks or injection marks, um, 
It's very common. I have had those things as well. Uh, you might be in the midst of a MyLab process where as you begin to have organic extraterrestrial experiences, usually within a couple days or you know, however long afterward, you'll also be visited by factions of what they call the military industrial complex or what some people call, you know, like space program stuff. And they'll pick you up and deprogram you and examine you, take samples from the body. Um, in certain cases, they will forcefully extract memories and thought forms from the body. And so it feels like you've probably had a little bit of that, but I'm going to be real. Only you are really going to know. A lot of people that do this work, they're going to be peering outside of your energy field into what is already present for you. And so you know, from my opinion and the work that I do, I would confirm that yes, you've had visitations. Yes, you've had abductions. To me, it feels like gray activity more than anything else. But at the same time, I would say feel free to use those terms, you know, Arcturian, Pleiadian, Orion, Syrian, whichever ones feel right to you. I think that, you know, they're kind of, it's beyond that for a lot of us. Um, so I would say use your judgment. But anyway, I realize I'm going on and on Shiba Inu, but I would say you are correct in your belief that you've had beings work with you. And so I'm just going to pull a card for you really quick because um, I feel like I'm ranting at you. So <laughs> here we go. Rashiba Weenu, what's going on around her? What's happening in her environment? Uh, okay. All right. So you have, you have a feline visitor at certain stages. You've got some feline energy that's viewed you as well. Here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. Well, 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 you got a king of wands. I'm going to get really close, Shiba Inu. This might get super blurry on your screen. Sorry, everyone. This is a king of wands, and when you really zoom in on him, it might just be pointless because you might not be able to see it, but you'll notice there's a little reptile guy sitting right there next to him, a little lizard. And so I'm not saying this is what's around you, but it's funny that you receive the one card in the world of multidimensional tarot that actually depicts a reptilian energy. There's only one. <laughs> there's literally only one in which there's a lizard form present, and you receive that one. And so, you know, I have been a proponent of positive reptilian energy. I take it very, very seriously. I think that a lot of us in our soul group have very positive reptilian guides. And it sounds like you've had both negative and positive ET experiences. But if we ask the question of, can you show us a symbol of who or what has been around me? And then we receive a card that has, you know, a symbolic depiction of a reptile energy. I, you know, I'm going to say that that's would be where I'm leading. Um, you know who's really good at telling you? Ivan Teller, <laughs> who I love. Ivan yes, really I love Ivan. He's body. amazing. He's a master at it, dude. So much better than I am. I'm more based within the body and what we call timeline energy. I, 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 I have just for my own purposes, I try not to name the beings that are around people. Because like I said, we only know so many names and most of them aren't really going to identify like I'm from this planet or that planet. But anyway, before I get off track, Shiba Inu, you have a king of wands. And so outside of all that stuff, just like queen of wands who showed up in the beginning of our readings tonight, the king of wands is meant to embrace his fire. He is meant to embrace his desire. He is meant to fulfill his will by doing the things that he wants to do in this world. And so um, you might notice, Shiba Inu, that the King of Wands has his hand out. And so outside of all this weird ET stuff, you really do have an authorization right now to begin demanding things from the world. And I don't mean in a haphazard, crazy way. Although if you want to get technical in his lower vibrational form, King of Wands will do that. He can be very demanding. He can be very fiery. He can be very self-serving. But on the flip side, when you're in the higher vibrations, you're going to be learning how to fulfill your will in a very benevolent and positive way. And so one of the things you have to do when it shows up in your life is you have to be willing to claim what's yours. Kind of like Emperor who showed up a little while ago. King of Wands doesn't ask. In fact, if you want to take something with you from this, stop asking. Don't ask for anything. I say this with respect. I'm not saying do it in a crazy way, but stop asking. Start telling people what you want. Tell them what you desire. Tell them what you demand. If you do it in a good way and you've got king of wands on your side, people will instantly go, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, obviously. They will not 
bat an eye. They won't give it a second thought. They'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. They'll follow you because people want to follow the king and queen of wands. When they do things right, they they recruit others based upon how real and powerful their energy is. And so, anyway, I'm going on and on with your cards. I hope you feel the authenticity of what you've been experiencing and understand that none of it happens by mistake. And so, boom. Well, I hope that resonates with you, Shiba, and I hope that gives you some clarification on your experiences. You know what I was thinking real quick? And I know we don't have a lot of time left, but I'll just say, like, I don't think it's it's possible for anybody to make like full ex, full clarification of their experiences because it's so insane, it's so mysterious, it's so out of this realm of reality. It's like a lot of times it's happened in an astral realm or like a like a like, like even when I had this spirit in here, like I didn't, I couldn't even admit it to myself because like I didn't understand what was going on. It, it seems like out of this, it literally seems out of this world. You know, oh, what it I mean? is really. It is How really. can someone make sense of that? You know what I mean? I, well, I can actually kind of tell you at least a little bit. I What I do when I've encountered those, those energies is I will look at the emotional quantity that it brings into your life. Does it bring fear? Does it bring avoidance? Does it bring anger? Does it bring, does it bring frustration? It might be a gross oversimplification for some people, but, you know, and this is a dumb thing I always say. After doing so many thousands of these, you're going to learn a few things. It doesn't mean you learn it right. It doesn't mean you do it right, but you're going to see patterns. And what I've seen with people that have encountered real entities or have had visitations or have had abductions or have had attacks is that the energy signature of whoever is with you in that room or within that space is going to usually tell you a hell of a lot about who and what they are. It doesn't mean they cannot obscure themselves. It doesn't mean they can't hide their energy. Real powerful, higher, and also lower dimensional energies can show up as amazing beings of light. In fact, if you want to get technical, sorry to go on and on here, but if you really did encounter a demonic energy, I can nearly guarantee you that it's not going to show up like a demon. It's not going to show up like this horrific being and, and, and scare the shit out of you. Because that's why. Why would they do that? They're going to show up as I'm an angel of light. I'm the Archangel Michael. Give me your energy. When they do show up, it's going to be from a very, very different lens. And I would say that's why we need to look at the after effects. Did you feel drained? Did you feel sickened? Did you feel angry? That's going to tell you who who and what is around. And anyway, watch out because I'll go on and on. About no, that's that. fascinating. That's I love talking about that. We could do a whole, we could do a whole, um, <laughs> you know, show on that. You know what I mean? Like we could do, we could do a, a whole. I mean, yeah. Sorry, um, I'll get to the next one. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, we, we will certainly maybe we talk should about do a show on that future. sometime. You know, that would, I would be, love to. That would be really fun. You know, like it's going actually, like the attacks and stuff like that. You know, like. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a really big part of the book that I'm writing right now. That's why I'm stuck in that that thought area because I've been like writing about it every day for hours a day. But anyway, yeah, we have another person here. Thank you, Nikos. Um, yeah, sorry, Nikos. Thank, and thanks everybody for hanging out this whole time. I know it's been a long one. Let's do a reading for for Nikos. We got one more after this, Angel Wings, and then I'm uh, yeah, yeah. It's all good. And then that's it. Uh, and it's an honor, you guys. Thank you for donating to Rob's channel. Thank you for supporting him. I mean it sincerely. I know I say this to you every time, Rob, but you have a tremendous impact in our world as well. I think that at the time when I started coming on your show was a time in which nobody wanted to have me on their show at all. It was like I would reach out to people be like, hey, hey, I want to come on your show. They'd be like, yeah, no, forget it. You know what I mean? People, which is a cycle that a lot of us go through. Like you'll get dissed, you'll get, you know, maligned by people. You'll expose too much of yourself and people will judge you for that. And I've been through many different identities in this path. And there's times when people don't give a shit about what you're doing. And you were one of the people that was like, hey, come on my show. Let's talk. And honestly, it's had a tremendously positive impact on the work that I do. So thank you for that. That's good to know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And like, I mean, yeah, I hope I hope you guys support Matt too, because like Matt's a great person. Like he, he doesn't even ask for any of this money that you guys donate like he lets oh, me yeah, for you. Yeah. you know so <laughs> so how do people donate to you can people donate to you um you certainly can if you want but i'm gonna be real i do i never solicit for donations in fact i don't even encourage them we're well taken care of by the world and i am completely supported through the psychic and healing work that i do 
I would say if you want to support us, you guys can join our Patreon group, the Blue Flame Collective on Patreon, because for that, you can only have to pay $10 or some people pay 20 and you're going to get a reading every month. We do a monthly reading group where everyone in the Patreon that shows up will get a reading. We do a monthly energy clearing. And so I'd say that's the easiest and most low cost way to kind of support us. And then likewise, you can always book a session. It's the heart of what I do are private sessions. And so anyway. I'm going to put your Patreon in the chat so people Thanks. have it. It's at the Blue Flame, Flame Collective, right? Yeah, it's just yeah, patreon.com slash Blue Flame Collective. Anyway, I know we're going on and on, and for those that don't know, uh, YouTube always limits the viewability of shows that go longer than two hours. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna hurry up. But anyway, mm -hmm. Ecos, here we go. <sighs> Anything that needs to be seen or known, here it comes. Three, two, one, and boom. Hey, all right. It's not a pentacle character. That's a good sign. Nikos, you have a page of cups. Man, this is a good moment. The pages always show up when you're in a new cycle. So congratulations on your post-eclipse timeline shift. The pages will come into your life specifically to inform you that you're in a new cycle. And that, honestly, you're going to need to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and deeply internalize how real you are and how far you've come. Because pages come in a different package than everyone. They might be smaller. They might be weirder. They might be bigger. They might be older. They might be younger. Coincidentally, Page of Cups is the number one youngest being in the world of tarot. She's at the earliest stages of her transformation. It doesn't mean you are. I'm just giving you the facets of her. And when she comes in, the type of process she signals or that she brings into your life is one of empathic activation. That is because Page of Cups is the biggest empath in the entire world of tarot. If there's a feeling in the room, you're going to feel it. If there's an idea in the room, you might also pick up on it. Also, if there's negativity in the room, you're probably going to feel that as well. This being feels everything, and it's both their greatest strength and also a major weakness because Page of Cups, for those that can see this, has a very small cup. And what that means is you must learn how to renew yourself. You must know how to step away from things in the world that make you sick, that make you feel crazy, that make you feel angry, moments in which you realize that you might be absorbing other people's energy. Page of Cups has to know when to go, okay, I'm out of here. Yeah, nope. They have to be able to unplug themselves, renew themselves, which, you know, she tells you exactly how to do it, connect with water connect with your emotions. If you're able to do that with a page of cups, you're going to be able to unlock empathic abilities at an astounding rate because this is one of the most psychic energies. She's not the most psychic, but she's going to feel things that other people cannot even possibly imagine. And you really got to accept that about yourself because the problem with pages, like I said, is they come in a different package. People might not rec they might not recognize you. They'll look at you and go, really? You? Come on. And then it's like, yes, it is. It's definitely you. And so um, you must learn to self-recognize. And anyway, I'll pause there, Nikos. It's a good thing to get. Trust your hunches and your empathic knowings. But, wow, that's amazing. And thank you for the comment. Just put this up real quick. I love this compliment before we put up the last one. This was great by uh, Zero Point Energy. He said, Rob rocks the ether with truth. Love you guys. Keep up the high vibes. Thank you, man. Thank that's you. awesome. Hey, that means a lot, you. you know, like it means a lot when people are getting like the work that we do, that means like the world to me, you know what I mean? Cause that means like we're making a difference, you know, like it's like, cause a lot of times I feel like I'm, sometimes I feel like I'm heading down like a, you know, like I've some like, Oh, I'm not fucking getting anywhere. Right. <laughs> but I oh, really man, am. I'm just really? not seeing it, you know, I don't know. I, Sorry. I think, this, no, oh, it okay. makes total sense. I, I agree. We all do. I think that's a stage that everyone goes through when you do things in public, when you do the type of work that we do, which is essentially, you know, for those of you guys that know this, we're working with forces that a lot of people in the world still don't even believe that are real. You're spending all day talking about them with other people. I'm spending all day, you know, also talking about them with people as well. And it's like, there comes a lot of self-doubt. There comes a lot of imposter syndrome that we have to deal with. We absorb it. Probably you especially are absorbing so much from all the shows that you do. It makes sense. We're going to come to weird stages of that. And anyway. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry to go um, on and on. This is for angel wings. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. What she said, she said, uh, oh, what did the Orions wish to tell me? That's interesting. Oh, that's like, a very good question. Yeah. I love Orion energy. A lot of people know this. I, like I said earlier, I'm always like, don't claim certain ET groups. There's too many of them. But if I was going to claim an ET group, I claim Orion straight up. I understand it. I feel them. And yes, Orion can get very negative. Okay. That's not a lie, but. I was going to say Ryushin thinks they're like the real bad ones, right? You Do you follow Ryushin's yeah. work? I have. I have seen some of his work. And I got to be real. There's a hell of a lot of negative energy in the Orion system in what some people call the Orion group, which is kind of separate from all the beings that are in the Orion system. There's many, many different civilizations, many different wavelengths of consciousness. And honestly, if you did want to look for a place where a lot of negativity hangs out, you'd look at Orion. But I often describe it the way a lot of people describe New York, which is you get the best of the best and the worst of the worst, and they're coexisting yeah. alongside each other. It's about who you connect with. It's about what neighborhood you go to. It's about you know what it is that you're looking for. And I think Orion represents the highest highs and the lowest lows of the ways of consciousness within our mortal realm. And so for some people, it's the greatest evil. And then for other people, you know, it's going to be the place that they originate from and go to in, in between lives, which I think it is for me. And, um, you know, I don't believe that the Orion group is overwhelmingly negative, but I might be wrong. I certainly don't know everything. I know that for me, they're not negative. I know that for me, the groups that inhabit and connect and come from Orion have been nothing but respectful. They've been nothing but benevolent. They've been very intense, but I have never felt misled by Orion energy. And so maybe that's just me. But anyway, this is for Angel Wings. Sorry, I'm getting off track. <sighs> for those of you assisting Angel Wings from the Orion system, anything that needs to be seen or heard, here we go. Three, two, one, and... Whoa. Whoa. All right. Angel wings. Can we just pause for a moment and mention that you, this, <laughs> this is temperance and he literally has angel wings. Can we just, can we just notice that for a second here? This is wow. We asked for a message from Orion's or maybe from your guides and man, did they ever deliver? You literally received one of the only, I think the only person in the world of multidimensional tarot who has angels' wings. So that wow. cannot be understated. But having said that, what does temperance mean? Because in the world of tarot, temperance is one of those cards that can confuse a lot of people. They see it and they're like, temperance, okay, well, well, well what, what exactly does that involve? Well, it involves many things, but when we approach it from a multidimensional perspective, temperance is the path of balance. It is the path of healing. This is the card and the symbol of the healer, one who is meant to bring balance, one who is meant to balance the elements. And when you look at the symbolism of it, you've got, you've got a sphere in each hand. You've got one foot in the land. You've got one foot on the water. So what does that mean? You're bridging elements. You're balancing elemental energies. You are on a path of self-healing. If we want to make it about energy from Orion and we're like, okay, well, what are they trying to tell me? It's funny because we were just saying, oh, yeah, Orion's very negative and, you know, there's all kinds of evil there. And then the symbol, when we ask for a symbol from Orion, they give you the literal opposite. Well, maybe not the opposite. They give you the balancing of those energies. And so we could say that if it's a message from Orion, they're, they're instructing you to continue to balance yourself through paths of self-healing. That's literally what you do. When temperance comes in, you engage in healing, self-care. You learn that you are literally a bridge between the spirit world and the physical world. There's only two people in the world of tarot that have that trait that is shown to you plainly in who and what they are. There's only two people that are bridging the elements that are meant to be the bridge between spirit world and physical world, and it's temperance and the star. And so the message from Orion is continue to balance thyself, continue to heal thyself, acknowledge the elemental energy that you're working with, and remember that you are a bridge between the spirit world and the physical world. Whichever choice you make with temperance, you can choose right, you can choose wrong. It doesn't matter because it's about balancing those things. And so usually when you do it right and you balance yourself, you start doing it for other people, which is why a lot of people get temperance 
when they're entering a stage in which they're going to be working with or they have an opportunity if they choose to work with other people's energy. And so anyway, I could go on and on, Angel Wings, but I love the fact that your name is Angel Wings, your thumbnail image has Angel Wings, and the card that you ask for is a guy with Angel Wings. So. I was going to say it's like the cards really spoke tonight, like the, with the Andromedan getting the assassin like type guy and yeah. then – this with angel wings, it's almost like I feel like that happens when someone's like, maybe we're all real connected. Maybe it's you because you're a good reader, and then like the audience is really connected tonight, and it's just kind of. I hope the so. cards are speaking. What do you think? I, so. I I think it's all of those things. Honestly, I think it's all of those things. And let me be real, you guys. I do these readings pretty much every day. And not all of them are dead on. You got to be real. Like when you do a lot of readings, you are going to find inevitably you're going to get a lot of shit wrong and you're going to be like, oh, oh, yeah, of course, it's probably this instead. That's part of the journey. And then there's going to be times when you lock into a certain wavelength or a framework and it's like over and over again, you'll ask a question. And it's not like they tell you everything, but they'll be like, here's a relevant symbol to you. It's funny because at the beginning of our show, I was like, we have a very rapid call and, you know, response energy. And so I would say that's a testament to what everyone that watches this show brings in here. And so, yeah, thank you, you guys as well. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, you, uh, this was amazing, man. I'd love to have you. I'd love to do this every month. Like This was amazing. Like this was really a, a good this was a good night, I think, for, for, you know, I think the audience really enjoyed it as well. So, I appreciate it. Wow. Thank you. It's an honor to be here and get to do this. And so, yeah, thank you to everybody in the chat. Spam of the chat with a bunch of alien emojis before we go. <laughs> Spam yeah. the chat. But anyway, yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah. Do you want to tell everybody where they can find you? And thanks, Matt. This was amazing. Yeah, totally. Um, we are at rememberyourmission.com. Uh, that's the only place you can book a session with me is at rememberyourmission.com. Um, it's the only work I do. My wife, Honora, does as well. Um, I'm trying to get her to come on the show one of these days. Wink, wink. <laughs> maybe, she'll, maybe she'll show up. But, um, but yeah, this is the only work we do. So hit us up at rememberyourmission.com. And then you can find us on YouTube, which we're still there. We're heavily shadow banned. But you can go to re at Remember Your Mission on YouTube as well. For those of you guys that have subscribed to our channel, you'll notice I have not done a live show in a while. It's because I'm writing a book right now and I've had to like literally put myself in a bubble. But we're going to be coming back very, very soon for a lot more of these shows. And then thirdly, you can find us on Patreon at the Blue Flame Collective. And um, yeah, once again, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, we missed anybody tonight. We've been going two hours and 15 minutes, guys. I got, I, I think I, you know, like we'll, we'll, I'll make it up to you guys somehow. I was, whoever I miss, you know, like, I, you know, like it's like, um, two hours is a long time to go you know okay. or thanks matt and thanks everybody for tuning in tonight and uh have a good night everybody until next time uh take